Monaco Pizza presents SCP. The Steve Dangle Podcast with your hosts, Steve Dangle and Adam Wilde. So, I was at the ACC today. For what? I was recording the other show that I do. You know. What? That other show. The, the show that I'm cheating on you with. How dare you? Uh, the Blue Line Podcast with Adam Wilde and Sasky Stewart. It's okay, I'll be uh, here. Seven day fool. To be found at uh, Leafs Nation Network. Um, but uh, so I, I I I walk in the the door to the office, and the office door is is basically one of the gates. So if you are, it's one of the like platinum gates. So if you're a very wealthy ticket holder, you walk in the platinum seat gates, and that's that's where you walk in if you're during normal business these hours. Are the, the Spinny doors at gate two. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. I've always wondered what it'd be like to go in there. I well, haven't gone in there. It's not that exciting. Um, so if you haven't noticed by now, Steve is sick. Yeah, sorry. yeah, Steve's sick. Um, <laughs> no, no. But what's important is that I went to the security there because, of course, there's security there, and uh, I said, um, I said, so um, I'm here for you know I'm here to to work, which is super cool to say. I I'm have here to say. To work. I'm here to like, I got, I'm here with the Leafs Nation Network. It was kind of neat to say. That's and what, then I looked at him. That's what you say on the first day at a new job. You I'm go, here to work. I'm here to work. That's exactly what your boss wants to hear. But what I, what I realized as I was talking to the security guard is he is sort of a police officer for the Leafs. So that makes him a police officer. Oh, God. Right? Why did You're I tell that whole story just to say that? Yeah, he's a police officer. Why did I, I'm sick? I don't want to be. Why? Here. I don't want to have to deal with that. Why has nobody come up? Why has nobody said that? Why aren't they called police officers? I was I was pretty proud last night because James Reimer and his wife April mm-hmm. went as Jack and Jill for Halloween. Nursery rhyme. Because it's his name. Nursery rhyme. And I tweeted, I respected that tweet. I thought that was great. I thought it was fantastic. Some of your best stuff. Nursery rhyme. Yeah, right? Dog dad jokes. <laughs> <laughs> so you are feeling sick. Yeah. We whatever. had to push back yesterday's show, but whatever. Yeah. Whatever. People get sick. I'm not going to man flu it. Mm-hmm. Mansplain and man flu and... I man anything. Whatever. Be a man. No, I feel... Uh, man, no spray? Big fan. Big fan. Uh, my fiance loves that stuff too. Oh, it's like napalming your nose, and it, I'm not gonna lie, it kind of hurts. You love the smell it, of n- nose spray in the morning? No, it smells and tastes awful, but it just it fixes fixes the problem. Amazing. Don't want to be stuffed up anymore. So, because the Leafs get a loss in San Jose, oh, and not, not a good a loss. loss. No. By the way, that happened. Uh, not a good loss. No. The Leafs finally, finally get some new lines, and they are almost the optimal lines you would hope for, almost. Yeah, I saw some people complaining about it. It's like, look, you wanted change. You don't always get to pick what the change is. In fact, you never get to pick what the change is. No, You're yeah, not the head coach. You're not Mike Babcock. So. <laughs> but Carrick for Polak, mm-hmm. given what the team currently has. Well, let's start with the forwards. I want to start with sure, the forwards. Sure, sure, sure. Um, let's start with forwards. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run down the line. So the one line that has been consistently awesome is Hyman Matthews Nylander. That won't change. Yeah. Line two looks like right now, Komarov, Kadri, Levo. What's wrong with that? That's cool. That is, that is boy, Josh Levo is going to have the game of his life tonight, or at least he better. <laughs> yep. He's never going to get a better shot than that. This is his chance. The next shot he gets as good as this one will be with another team. Um, the third line, and I okay. love, it's a good point. The, the third line's my favorite, and we'll talk about why in a second. This is odd. JVR, Marlow, Connor Brown, I mean, as in Marlow at center. Yes, that's a very good line. Um... But Babcock said in the past, and he reiterated it when Marlow was doing line rushes, he goes, we didn't get Marlow to play center. Mm-hmm. Okay, so why is he center? I know it's a temporary thing. Was more that bad? Well, the I was reading... And it wasn't here, good, here's what the sure. fourth Here's what the fourth line is, by the way. And I think this is a definite improvement over the fourth line that they've had. And not that... Because you know what? I think on most nights, that fourth line's been pretty good. Uh, you know, yeah, I mean, I would say so when, too. with Brown and uh, with Brown and Moore, at least. That's why I um, felt bad picking on Martin. And I feel like so do he I. Had, he had a very bad game. He had a bad game against San Jose. But for the most part this season, he hasn't been nearly as bad as people say. Martin, Bozak, Marner. That's a pretty good fourth line. I mean, that's almost the Leafs' second line last year. Yeah. Except Martin for JVR. Here's the thing. JVR Martin. Um... Uh, what was I going to say? Yeah. Uh, with with Marlow at center, he's been a center a good chunk of his career. 
Yeah, um, and even when he wasn't playing center, he took a lot of faceoffs. Why not? Why not? He's your that that means the Leafs' top three centers are Matthews, Kadri, Marlow. Marlow. That's and then pretty Bozak. awesome. And then Bozak on a fourth. Now, um, the reason that I think Dominic Moore was is sitting now is because him and Martin, I think their Corsi was zero against uh, well, San Jose. So was Browns, but uh, zero. I mean, this is what I said in my last video. Was like, look at the Leafs forwards. Just look at them. If you can't kill penalties. Be on the power play or both, you need to get off the roster. There's no space for you. Well, and that's exactly what Mike Babcock said to Chris Johnston in his article. He said this. Uh, he but said, Martin's still there. He hinted that uh, specialty teams' balance has played a role in Levo only dressing once so far. He said, uh, should he be in every day? You guys can debate that all you want. The reality is you, you need a certain amount of power plays, a certain amount of penalty kills, power play guys, that is, uh, a certain amount of penalty kill guys, and enough speed in your lineup. He's coming in Wednesday, which is today, obviously. He's going to get a good opportunity. The opportunity is now to grab hold of it and make it as hard on me as possible and take someone's job exactly when now, you get the chance take someone's job if you're the odd man out and a power play specialist on this team that's uh, it's a hard hard way to make a living like it's a hard way to get in the lineup um you know with all due respect to nikita soshnikov i think levo's probably a better nhl player but sosh kills penalties well, that's why he won and this is where i i, I wanted to bring up nazim kadri because Dominic Moore is the one of the main centers that does the the penalty kill, right? He's one of the main penalty yes. kill guys. Mm-hmm. Why yet is Nazem Kadri not? If that guy wants, if he says, if that Selkie, remember we were talking about the Selkie we thing last about year. That last year, mm-hmm. what if that is actually going to happen? If he's still committed to that, what's the holdup? And is he that bad defensively that they couldn't give him a shot? I don't know what it. Maybe they're trying to keep him fresh five on five. Um, but like, but because his line is usually the shutdown line, but mm-hmm. it, I don't know. It doesn't look like it to me tonight. Anyway, um, what I was saying in the summer was maybe Babcock doesn't trust him on the penalty kill because he's historically bad at faceoffs. He's not anymore. No, this this season he's made a he's made a bunch of improvements. I'm just looking at the roster really hard right now and trying to figure out who the least penalty killers are. Hyman is definitely. Mm-hmm. Komarov is definitely, and he'll probably take draws. Connor Brown? Connor Brown is definitely, and then who's the other center? I wonder if Kadri gets that shot, because I don't be. I don't think it's going to be Bozak. I mean, um, the best answer would be we won't find out, because the Leafs will not take a penalty, <laughs> just like the yeah, Sharks. Yeah. Right? right? Um, and I saw some people complaining about that, by the way. The Leafs didn't have the puck against the Sharks. That's why they didn't get a call. Um, there should have been one call against the Sharks, but I don't know. It, it's a difference of one. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and you know what? It's funny. It was really, I mean, it was an ugly loss, but it was still 3-2 at the end of the game. 3-2, they almost tied it. Um, you could argue that Babcock pulled Anderson way too early. It looked like they were about to tie it. Um, I, th- I thought he was pulled too early. Um, and you could say maybe part of the reason that Moore is scratched today, although I don't know if Babcock would have admitted it, is Moore sort of cost them the game. Now, he got hit from behind. I don't remember who it was by. And then he retaliated with a cross check in front of the net. Now, he had every right to be pissed off. That should have been called 100%. But you do not retaliate. No, and not with a tied game that you definitely should be losing in the third period. As one of the penalty killers, Dom. 37 years old, 855 career NHL games. He has to know better. He deserves to sit tonight. It was dumb. Like, he's not a... a solidified player on this team. The the other concerning thing with Dominic Moore and a lot of Leaf fans like really celebrated his signing including I think all of us. Yeah, it seems it's it, listen, it was a definite improvement over what we had last year which was Ben Smith. That doesn't mean it's And no good. offense to Ben Smith. No, but like Berkshire the second that signing happened, I was talking to him I'm like, "How about Don Moore, huh? How about Don Moore? He's an improvement, right?" He goes, "Well, he's an improvement, but According to the numbers, he's still supposedly one of the worst regular centers in the NHL. <laughs> wow. That's what Berkshire said. I don't remember what numbers he used for that, and I don't know if he's written about it. Yeah, I mean, and, you know, he seemed as though he was sort of like a face-off specialist sort of penalty kill yeah, guy. Jay McClement, Dave Steckel kind of guy. Yeah, he's got three goals. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, three goals. And he's had bright spots. I mean, like, just because we're in a bit of a down spell right now doesn't mean we can't say we haven't been impressed sometimes with Dominic Moore's play. Totally. He's had a handful of bad games. That's about it. Um, now, on defense, and this is what you were talking about, it's Riley Hainsey, which has pretty much been the same all year and, and looked pretty good. I don't, I don't know. They, they're, uh, they're the Leafs' one rock back there, I would say. Yeah. Um, Gardner Carrick. That was a pairing last season. Last season, I mean, it's... It, it it's, was their 3-4 last season, that's it's, right. It's Babcock playing to Carrick's strengths. I like that. So what? tell me about that. Um, basically, he's going, you don't, here's, uh, you don't need to babysit the rookie as the sophomore. Yeah. Like, uh, I don't think that that's fair to him, although he's doing the exact same thing to Zaitsev. Zaitsev's a little older. Um... There's already chemistry there, and when you're Jake Gardner's defense partner, your you know life is just a little simpler. You don't need to carry the puck. Does it? You just kind of you Jake's, just cover for him. Jake's had some real Jake Gardner moments, and I don't mean that unfortunate. Like I mean, you know, there are Jake Gardner moments that are positive. I mean, some yeah. negative Jake Gardner moments. Boys, he has the biggest cajones on the entire team. Yes, there are so many plays where I'm like, and this is where you pass it. Pass it. Jake, for the love of God, pass it. Wow, he's just carrying it in front of the net. Behind mm-hmm. the, like, po- poise, I guess you might call that. But sometimes you just go, where Where did the poise go? Right. I think he's been much better at it this season. Um, but there are moments where there are giveaways. And I think that just comes with a player like Jake Gardner. There are going to be some spectacular, spectacular plays. Brian Most Kate's of the time pretty home. good, but then holy yeah. shit. Shit. Sometimes yeah. you're going to terrible, terrible giveaways. And that's unfortunately, I think, the reputation he holds. Even though the numbers don't support that he does it all the time, people tend to remember the bad giveaways. Yeah. Well, it's like uh, a little bit like Marinson. Yes. Like Jake Gardner does all this stuff that makes you go, all right, well, you can stay. Yeah. Marinson doesn't. Um, so Gardner Carrick will be interesting to see them back together. And then you've got... Nikita Zaitsev, another sophomore, but I mean, he's like 26. And Andreas Borgman. And, on, and honestly, Andreas Borgman, to me... First goal. First goal. First goal. Has looked better and better and better. He's had rough games, but he's 21, 22. He's 22. Um, boy, has he been getting blown up a lot. Like, teams really seem to target him when it comes to physicality. And he does seem to average one pretty bad giveaway a game. But uh, he does seem more confident. I liked I liked in the final six seven minutes when the Leafs were losing against San Jose. I like I think Borgman is the offensive guy. I don't think he's the big bad stalwart that they seem to be trying to make him. He, he's he's the offensive guy. He rushes it. Um, the you know the defensive Matthews in that he's the the big guy who takes it to you. Um, it's. I'm gonna. I'm very interested to see how he and Zaitsev play out because I'm trying to figure out whose role is what. Mm-hmm. Um, it's probably smart in terms of managing Zaitsev's minutes. He's gonna play a crap ton anyway. He's gonna play on both special teams. Um, so that's an interesting case of, you know, putting a guy on the third pair and still using him a lot. Right. Yeah. Because I, mean, I don't think third pair. Team. Third pair doesn't mean third pair. On this team, you know what I mean? No, it does, well, it's, it's like how, you know, third line or fourth line, like Marner being on the fourth line, really, mm-hmm. if he's on the power play and everything. Is JVR on the fourth line tonight? No, he's on the third. No, it's Bozak, sorry. Yeah. I mean, Bozak, I Bozak assume, and will still be, I assume both those guys will still be on the power play, so it's a big deal. And what? you know what? We, in criticizing more, we forgot that Bozak's in the doghouse. Well, so let's talk about him, because again... People are jumping on the trade Tyler Bozak train when he's literally had his lowest value again. <laughs> the time to trade Tyler Bozak is the middle of last year when he's flying high and scoring a bunch of goals. A lot, you know, uh, in fairness, a lot of people said that. The time to trade Bozak was uh, 2012, 2013, Kessel, JVR, and Bozak. That's when it was time to trade. Well, he was first line center Tyler <laughs> Bozak. With Tyler Bozak yes. right now, is it a... Is it a lack of confidence and the weaknesses that he's always had just seem bigger? Uh, is it the line just isn't working anymore? Is What is it with him specifically? He just, it, it's almost like when he, it's almost like he's, it's not that he is, but every time the puck seems to get to him, it's like he's standing still. Do you, do you know what I mean? Like they're just, there isn't that creativity and firepower that JVR, Marner, and Bozak brought last year. 
You know, I feel like Marner kind of stirred that drink, um, and maybe his struggles have had something to do with this. Um, what's been crazy? What's been weird to me, and I'm going to go to Marner, but we'll get back to Bozak. Is doesn't it seem like he's just flying around out there trying shit? Like he's just oh, oh pass, spin pass. I'm gonna. Fr-. He's a weird player to watch. Like really watch guys like Nylander and Matthews who are so robotic. And then you watch Marner. It's almost weird that they're all put in the same category. Uh, that's going to be a fascinating contract negotiation. But he just seems to be out there trying shit. Um, he needs to be put out there with two veterans, I think, who aren't named Tyler Bozak or JVR because those guys are just historically bad at defense. It's weird. <laughs> he That was his rookie year in the NHL. He played online with two guys who are known to be bad defensively. And weirdly... We're unsatisfied with how Marner is defensively. See how that works? <laughs> yeah. See how that works? Like, if, I'm not sure how much this is his fault. I'm I'm surprised that, given that there's a line with Komarov and Kadri, who can score, that you wouldn't put Marner with them. The other issue is you got a guy like Connor Brown, who is good, who is extremely good, and but was he's good, good with def- those guys last but year. But he's good defensively. Exactly, and he can score. But what I mean is that, does that not balance out a, a Bozak JVR? It's... Very strange, because you're trying to develop these players, and you're trying to win hockey games. The Leafs have a weird Franken-rebuild now. Mm-hmm. You know, I, th- I think if they were not expecting to make the playoffs, maybe they'd play Marner higher up, and maybe they would try that mm-hmm. line more regularly. And also, the line rushes don't really matter. Um, so often in a game, we've seen Babcock completely change the lines, and Marner gets to play with Kadri, and Marlowe gets switched to center, and... It's just that that's how they're starting the game. It's a story today. Yeah. No one really talked about they did it at the end of the Sharks game because they lost. Right. Imagine if they had come back and won with Marlow at center. I think Mar- Marlow being at center might be a bigger story today. Well, and I, I, was, I was thinking about that, and I thought, okay, fine. They didn't get him to play at center. It doesn't mean they shouldn't. And, and here's, here's the, my reasoning for this. The Leafs are very powerful and very deep up the wing, right? Mm-hmm. We've got room. Mm-hmm. The one thing that they do kind of struggle with depth-wise, center. Can I throw this out there? Uh, I was thinking this. Should Bozak be a winger? Uh, well, I, I think the reason he stayed where he is is because he historically had a great face-off percentage. Right. Um, but he can't defend. Like, whoever... Why like, is that? Why is that? Is I, it effort? I is don't, it skill? Like, I, you can't tell me that he's... It might be effort. It might be, like, when I... like how Sometimes it, Babcock says things where I'm just like, you don't believe that. Like, when he said Hyman's one of the best four checkers in the league, I was like... That's his okay, boy. that's a little bit hyperbole, but... that Yeah, like you said, that's his boy. Really likes him. He plays with Austin Matthews and William Nylander. It's one of the best lines in hockey. Okay, I, I understand. A couple weeks ago, or a week ago or whatever, when the Leafs were six games above five hundred or whatever, he said Bozak has elite hockey sense. No, he very doesn't. It's elite in the sense that he's an NHL player, and no NHL players suck. None of them. Every single NHL player, very good at hockey, including Matt Martin, mm-hmm. would destroy the whole dirty lot of you in men's league. No, especially Matt Martin or, would destroy you. Oh my god! Yeah, literally <laughs> destroy you. He'd walk all over you. Oh my god! Like, it probably could skate skate circles around you. It's. What, I feel like I've told this story before, and it was it was it was a good lesson for a young, ignorant reporter, but I got to cover the Marlies when they had Ryan Hulwig. Remember Ryan Hulwig? I do. He was no. a fighter. Yeah, he was, he was a... Would he come from Dallas, or...? Um, I don't remember. No, I think you might be thinking of Nathan Parrott. I remember him, too, but I remember Hulwig. Hulwig was like Philly From or... the Rangers. Rangers. He was the guy who got two hands slashed in the face by Chris Simon. Right. Okay. Yeah. I remember yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he came to the Leafs. He was one of Burke's acquisitions. I think he was a goon. He was... He was truculent. He was very truculent. He, he helped was, Thomas Caberle peel his teeth out of the boards. Yes, remember? <laughs> yes. A classic middleweight. Yes. A guy like Zenon Kanaka. Um, and when he was with the Marlies, he had a two-goal game. And I asked him wow. about... Wow. I know. <laughs> I asked him I asked him about... Frazier McLaren had a four-goal career. Oh, my God. Are you, pretty I sure. I think you're right. <laughs> I don't, is that accurate? I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah, look I, it up. I, I remember making a joke... 
uh, when Jay Rosehill was on the Leafs that, well, you can't punch the puck into the net. <laughs> and then during a game, he actually had a goal of his called back because he, he punched it into the net. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> but anyway, so Ryan Hulwig. Ryan Hulwig, he had a two-goal game, and I asked him about it, and I was like, you know, you know what 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 happened there? Like, where did this offensive explosion come from? And he's like, well, I I, I scored in junior, like it's and it's I, he was very professional about it and like saw how green I was, but it's true. Like every single guy, even the goons, like scored in junior. It's very rare. That you have a guy who like just their career they fought their way up. No, yeah, like John Scott. That's it. Yeah, that's, even yeah. even Wade Belak was a prolific he scorer was a in junior. First round pick, top ten pick, I believe. No. First round pick. <laughs> I think mean, he, he was top ten or top five. He, yeah. mm, I want to say twelfth overall in nineteen ninety four, ahead of Patrick Elias. Wow. Every Good. professional athlete at every point in their career growing up is the best player in their league, no matter what sport yeah. they're playing. True. Yeah. yeah. And they're talented in every aspect. They're better than you. <laughs> There's a reason they're professional. <laughs> yeah. It, it's why they make millions of dollars for fun. No, because it's extraordinarily <laughs> hard to do. <laughs> Millionaires don't want to give you their money. It's but I mean, like, was, uh, but when I mean also was for fun. Black drafted? Uh, what, sir? When was Wade when, Black drafted? 94. By the Flames? Uh, no, by the Nordiques. Ooh. 12th overall. 12th overall? Drafted by the Quebec Nordiques. Woo! In 1994. Wow. wow! Now the Leafs got him off What's waivers 12 from 12 divided by 12? One. Okay. Excellent. You always also, say you can't long divide. There you go. I mean, that's 12 times 12. very simple division. <laughs> 12 times 12. That is 144. Hey, all right. Mm. All right, all right. <laughs> okay, now ask me anything above the 12 times tables. <laughs> and I'm screwed. Um, so anyway, yes, uh, all the players in the NHL are... They're stars, they're the the best in the world. But Bozak having elite hockey sense. Kiprios w- was taking some flack, I think, because uh, you know the Leafs play one of their worst games against the season against the Sharks, and they look terrible. And he's raving about how Matthews is going to be considered for and probably win the Selkie Award at a bunch of different points in his career. To that, I would say one, not before Kadri. Two, <laughs> no, he's definitely going to he's, he's win it before Kadri. I'm sorry. It was a fun bit. Yeah. Um, but, like, it's, it's funny. Matthews is, what, 20? 19? Mm-hmm. Yeah, 20. Bozak should be watching him. Like, Bozak should be watching what he does every shift. But Bozak's not going to get better at this point. This is what he's I'm saying. too old to get better. No, right? I, know, I know we've talked about him as... We talked about him, Komarov, and JVR as rentals, as your playoff rentals. So in that sense, is he best served as your fourth line center? Because I, I'm on a team that is so good offensively, I'm not 100% certain he makes your team better. Well, I, I think the thing is, is that um, he's a guy that eventually will get going, right? He, yeah, it's not like he's done. Okay, well, after these, no. you know, these, he's had a bad, you know, seven games. And he's going to get him. back to his average eventually. Yeah, I don't need does. him to score goals. I don't need him to score goals. But Steve, I think the I think the point I'm trying to make here is that um, I I don't think that you can operate a playoff bound team or a team that you want to be playoff bound mm-hmm. by putting guys in spots so that's easy to trade them away. Mm-hmm. I think that you have to like. Yes, Bozak. If you if you want to maximize your value on Bozak, you don't have him on the fourth line. But I don't think that's how the Leafs are thinking. The Leafs are not thinking about Bozak's maximum value. They're thinking about how do we make the playoffs and how do we go far in the playoffs. This is what I'm saying. I think Bozak on the fourth line helps you make the playoffs because you're, I agree. you're masking his defensive shortcomings. Yeah. Yes, you put him, JVR, and Marner together. They will all eventually recover and... I mean, Marner's probably good for 20 goals, Bozak 15-20, and JVR 25-30. But it's the amount, that of, if the it's amount they allow. scores more, it doesn't matter. It's like that um, JVR-Bozak-Kessel line. They scored the most on the team, but the reason they didn't make the playoffs is because they allowed more than they scored. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So, I, I'm i not trying to dump on the guy, but it's like Jesse said. He's What is he going to do, get better? Right. I don't know. 
I don't know. You did have a nice season last year. And again, I, I guess I, we'll see. Maybe, I just, maybe we're overreacting. I love. Well, for sure we are. But that's how we. <laughs> I mean, that's what you do. I mean, we're talking about sports day yeah. to day, right? You get. You kind of have to talk about it in the moment. And part of that is overreacting to things. And um, I think my thing is this: I love, I love the move Marlowe to center. I love it permanently. I hope it stays that way. Mm-hmm. And the reason I hope that is because I love a Matthews, Kadri, Marlowe, Bozak center. And then, of course, it looks got, real nice we paper. have three or four NHL-ready wingers that are not currently with the team. Yeah. Like how there are not many teams that can say that. Move, move the guy who's got all the – he's got 500 career goals, and he's your third-line center? We were and he can about still this? skate like the wind? We've been talking about this probably since, like, last Stanley Cup final. Uh, m- moving one of your wingers who can play center – to center and developing their there, uh, developing them there, could solve a lot of problems for the Leafs. Mm-hmm. Or having a guy that's already done it. Or having which a, they do, which is perfect. Like Komarov, a lot of people think he can just step into center mm-hmm. and that's it. Not necessarily. Nylander, well, you got to take him away from Matthews. Why, yeah. why split up the best line in hockey? Yeah, how much do you really <laughs> want to do that? Um, but Marlowe, like you said, has played there. Mm-hmm. And he's I, a career over 50% face-off man. Yeah, well, and that's important. We didn't get him to play there, no, until but, he kicks ass at center. Like, if he t- completely kicks ass at center. Like, this is the perfect night for that kind of uh, experiment, by the way. Because, well, and hopefully you listen to it before the game. Uh, but the Leafs play the Ducks tonight, who are without Ryan Getzlaff <laughs> and Ryan Kessler. By the way, really? I, saw, I saw Ryan Getzlaff. Wow. <laughs> it said on Sportsnet, it had on the ticker, Ryan Getzlaff out and then face in brackets i'm like oh <laughs> yeah that no, sucks face. <laughs> face it's usually like hamstring lower body face look up uh, the, look up the ducks on daily face off okay it is uh, oh it's such a shame because they head into the season with such bad uh, defensive injuries and then they get these center injuries like that is a cup contending team yes and they will but still boy, contend. Do they look like crap right but, now by the way randy carlisle had a nice little snide remark yesterday I in anaheim he said uh have they figured out their identity yet is that what he said Yep. Yes. Yes, he's, Randy. You know, you have to understand Randy's sense of humor, right? Mm-hmm. He's he's a he's a sarcastic guy. So I, I'm sure he said it in good fun, but he, he also meant likable. it. Yeah, totally. I think there's a reason why he got like such an easy ride in the city from a lot of people. Like, I couldn't stand his coaching style, but it doesn't mean I, I wouldn't like him. I think I would enjoy him immensely. I think he seems like a funny guy. No, one thing that really I really respected about Randy Carlisle is remember uh, uh, the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge? Yeah. And he had Kadri do it? Mm, oh, I think, yeah. I think... Because Kadri was in the doghouse? That's right. But wasn't it... Um, wasn't Kadri, like, driving the truck or something? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Something along those lines. But Nikolai Kuhleman and Mikhail Grabowski are the guys who nominated Carlisle for the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge on social media. And this was after Kuhlman and Grabowski had left the team. So it was a shot at them. He, he uh, uh. Kuhlman did it, and then Grabowski comes out of the pool in his Islanders gear, and he goes, I nominate Randy Carlisle and Dave Nonis. And then Carlisle did it, and he goes, I'm doing this for my friend who has ALS, and blah, da 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 and yeah. yeah, he made it into this whole thing. I think Kadri was involved. Right? Yeah, Kadri, I think, dumped it on him. I think you're right. So that, that really turned me on him as a guy. Coach... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you want Anaheim's line coming? Yeah, that's here. Yeah. I mean, it's still good, but you got Cogliano, center. Raquel, Silverberg. So Ricard Raquel is their top center right now. Yeah. He and scored 30 goals last year, though, didn't he? He's a great player. Uh, Andre Case, Antoine Vermette, and Corey Perry. Case is a new guy, but he's pretty good. Mm-hmm. And Vermette is their second center. Yes. Ooh. And then their, their third line center is Derek Grant. Ooh, never heard of him. I think. I feel like he was a waiver claim by the Sabres last year or something like and that. And their fourth line center is Kale Kosila? Sure. I believe you. <laughs> That's a guy. No, I think I remember seeing he was called up. So yeah, that, yeah. there's a minor leaguer. Um, do we have the best fourth line center in the NHL? When <laughs> in playing? Tyler Bozak? Yeah. Yes. So what's the problem? It's pretty good. Well, well I, this is what I'm saying. <laughs> no, I'm, I, I agree. I'm if, with you. If he's, if he's a buy... Yeah, we don't care what his cap hit is. Like four point two five million dollars is insane to spend on your fourth line center, but he's already on your team. Leave him there. Who and cares? he's he's also not holding us back. You know that was that was the thing that we what was frustrating when he was the number one center is like, okay, we're ma- we're paying this guy 
and we're playing him in a position he shouldn't be in, and he's making four point two million or whatever. The Leafs still have a ton of cap room; they're going to be fine uh, with LTIR space, of course. But um, I think I really think that it's it's nice to know because people have been screaming and yelling and banging their heads off the walls about changing up the lines, and I, 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 I mean, it's to me, it's encouraging. And as much as it's not the lines that the internet would put together, and not the lines that I would necessarily Close put to together, it. it's pretty darn close. And it does show that they they do recognize they're not just going to stand pat and do whatever. They're going to adjust as they see fit, but they're going to do it at a slow pace, which, by the way, you know, I know I know we all on Twitter and, and NHL 18 and that sort of thing all like to make a change instantaneously. But in real life, you have to take things a bit slower. And it's not because of personalities it's because you have to hockey is creativity as much as it's numbers and creativity takes time and you can't split it would be like steve if you and i had started the show done it for three weeks and then someone had flipped out me for another co-host and then flipped me out again and you know what i mean like how could you ever gain a a balance right and we're thankful that it worked but you know what i mean it's it's you you gotta have some sort of um you gotta give something a try for three or four games before yes. you really know. In NHL, you can just keep swapping guys, and sometimes it works. This is this is <laughs> the most important question to me. So let's say the Leafs lose tonight. Does Babcock just go, Welp, Levo gone? <laughs> like yeah. if Levo's a healthy scratch against the Kings, trade him. Yeah. Tr- trade him. What's the point? No, that's not true. Because again, if a winger gets hurt. You need them. But is this a one-game experiment? I hope not. Yeah. I hope not. Well, and they're in the middle of an extremely difficult road trip. Uh, You get the Sharks, Ducks, who are luckily for the Leafs anyway, injured. The Kings, Mm -hmm. who are still hot, even though the Leafs beat them. And then they end it uh, against the Blues. Like, that's kind of lost. Who are first in the West right now. Exactly. Well, and people were criticizing us for not talking about them. We're going to. Um, Yeah, that's that's an awful road trip and then it's it's going to be very interesting to see uh what the vegas goaltending situation is like because the leafs first <laughs> home game when they get back is vegas i believe and, and that's uh, is it monday or tuesday uh, i want to say monday and oscar yeah, dansk is now injured too that's insane yeah, yeah. like that's insane are you fair. a goalie in the desert yeah. you're hurt, <laughs> yeah. you're hurt. <laughs> that's that's such a little rough stretch you go wednesday thursday saturday monday yeah. And it's all travel days. All travel. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. A uh, name to be looking out for, and this kind of just broke over the last couple days, is a guy named Igor Orzhiganov, uh out of the KHL. Yeah, he we app- heard about that in the summer, I think. Did we? I think okay, so. Well, so we now know a little bit more, but we do know that, according to Elliot Friedman on 30 Thoughts today, uh, he said that they're they're definitely interested. He said the wild thing about it is they already have 10 defensemen between their NHL and AHL rosters under contract for next year and four more are restricted free agents. But Lam- Lou Lamorello and Mike Babcock went to visit uh, Ojiganov face-to-face and he was impressed by that. Other clubs are trying to recruit him, but they are not optimistic about it. So he's got a contract that takes him to the end of the KHL season this year. Um, Leafs probably will sign him in the summer. Um, and then, you know, he'll fight for a spot next year. And apparently he's, you know, if you look at his numbers, it's a bit, um, it's a bit, from, uh, they do a really good 4 one on him on, on uh, Sportsnet. Who does he play for? Um, let me look it up. But okay. bas- basically. There is something we need to talk about. He's got a, he's KHL. got a booming, booming shot. Um, and, uh, so Rory Boylan did a, a thing. He plays for, uh, C- CSKA Moscow. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. and the thing about the, the ice in the KHL is it's international size. Yes. So there are less bombs from the point that make it in. Um, some guys can fricking oh. wire it though. The KHL has some bombs, some crazy shots, really right? Really hard shots. Also playing at a point per game in the KHL is Literally almost impossible for certain players. Like it is, there are certain players that do it, but it's like you yeah, have to be the best of the best. Something we got to talk about for sure. Well, why don't we talk about it? You want to talk about it right now? Yeah, let's talk okay, about well, it. Well, it ties into Shipachov, and I don't know when you were. Well, we can bring him up him. next. I, I, have a, I have a question about oh, sure. this. So, sure. what what's like the rights the leads have to him? Like what's none, the, none. Uh, it's Zaitsev all over again. It's it's basically they have a scout over there, and the Toronto Sun actually did an article about this about how they got Nikita Zaitsev. They've got a scout over there that goes and he sees these guys, and okay. he goes and he talks to them, and he develops relationships with them like over the course of years. Zaitsev, I think, was two years in the making. Oh, yeah. And, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And what really sold Nikita Zaitsev on Toronto was that Mike Babcock and Lou Lamorello flew over and met him. Mm. And 
Uh, and that's the same thing with uh, Ozhiganov, apparently, is, and I hope I'm saying that right. Um, right. You know, he's most teams will just send a scout over and go, yeah, like, you know, take him out for dinner and hopefully he signs with us. The Leafs go, no, 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 we'll come over. And that's how Rosen and Borgman ended up with the Leafs Colorado organization, too. too. Yeah. It, like, Dave Nonis went, went over. Back to Dave Nonis, yeah. So, so there's so, no guarantee Igor signs with us, though. No guarantee, no, but everybody... sign with anybody else if you want. What, yes. they're, okay. what they're telling Elliot Friedman is that all the other recruiting teams are like, we're not optimistic. Which, Seems like uh, he wants to go to Toronto. Which is okay. exactly Zaitsev. Mm. All over again. Yeah, and Zaitsev yeah. came and worked out here and that sort of thing. I'm going to dig up that Toronto Sun article. I think that's worth including. I want to and say he worked with Gary Roberts. He, he, he did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah. And so, um, I and and I think Chris Johnson, it was Chris Johnson that said earlier this season on, on our show, is is that he said, I think they found a, um, I forget how we framed it, but basically <laughs> a market there to help your defensive, your, to help your defense out without having to go through the draft or trades or free agency. It's sort of like, the free agency part two. It's uh, Brian Burke's free wallet comment. It's like a free wallet. I mean, it's true. It's well, and what's what's funny is even though you got to spend money signing this guy, it's actually cost effective. Oh um, yeah, for the richest team in hockey. Because think of how much money. Like let's let's say you draft a player and it takes them four years to make the NHL. You spent money and resources on developing that player for four years. That's that's not cheap. Mm-hmm. That's not cheap at all. They play in your minor league system. They work with all your coaches and blah, 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 before they even uh, have a game played on your NHL team. Then you sign a guy like Zaitsev, and yeah, you got to maybe pay him a little more than a rookie, but just comes right in. And he was a useful player. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And I think that's what they're looking for. It's that um, it's even if... If Oshaganov comes in and he is a third third pairing defenseman that is steady, you've won. You've won. It doesn't like it it really you don't need him to come in. Like Nikita Zaitsev, I think, is not I think he's the exception, not the rule. As in he came in and was pretty good right away. Right? Uh yeah, they got pretty lucky. Yeah. I don't think that that's gonna be what this guy is. But if he is he might not make the team. He might not. But if he is Andreas Borgman, then you've won. Well, and then what, what does it do for Andreas Borgman? Or Callie Rosen. Right. Callie well, then, Rosen's got to be like, ah. They got to fight. Ah, oh, we have too many good guys. No, no. Oh, yeah, no, this is the thing. It's the <laughs> player's problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's not the Leafs' problem. <laughs> like, okay, you'll have some unhappy guys. Leave. Yeah. Like Shibachev. Leave. Now, this is getting weird because yeah. of the whole repaying of the signing bonus and whatever. But before we even get there, um, there are numbers out there that uh, basically go, okay, if you scored this many points in the KHL, here's how many points that is uh, converted to the NHL. League-adjusted scoring. Kind of. No, actually not kind of, exactly. (laughs) That is what it is. Um, I have a problem with that when it comes to the KHL. I don't think it is... Well, it's, I, it obviously can't be 100% accurate, but I think it is teetering on useless because that, I mean, the NHL is is very even, except for the Coyotes, and uh, the KHL is very, 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 very not. Not even, no. It's a little bit more like, it's like it's almost like EPL, where there's like four or five teams that spend $100 billion, and then there's like, <laughs> here's here's little uh, Leicester City coming along, and oh, oh championship yeah. and we suck the next year because we can't outspend Manchester and Arsenal and all the other teams, right? Go to go to en.khl.ru It's the English... Wait, do K-H-L. that for me again. en.khl By the way, I hope you're doing this at home. Dot .ru, <laughs> yes. In the car, pull out your laptop. <laughs> um, and, <laughs> and go to the standings. Standings. Um, CSKA Moscow, who mm-hmm. Ozhiganov is on, I think is either tied with or just ahead of... SKA St. Petersburg in the KHL standings. SKA St. Petersburg, last I checked, has more than twice as many goals for as against. <laughs> All right, that's let's have a look. SKA. I don't want to touch your computer. Oh. But uh, <laughs> no, okay. SKA Moscow, sorry, SKA St. Petersburg has 100 and. No, that can't be right. Seriously? Those are points. Yeah, no. Oh, no, goals. that. Oh, oh my 29 God. 29 games. They have 126 <laughs> goals for 44 against. That can't be right. Is that last year? Or this? Oh my god! Yeah, there's 29 games. Oh, so I was wrong. They have okay. lost four times. Which in 29 I, I'm games? I'm surprised they've even lost four times, and two of them are in in overtime. 
How many? They have zero regulation losses. Oh, shit. <laughs> They've played 29 games, zero regulation losses. And then CSKA Moscow, which is slightly more mortal. But um, they played three less games, too. That's true. They are, their standings are weird. 15 wins, four overtime wins, two shootout wins, zero shootout losses, one overtime loss, four regulation losses. Their website's a little meh, but I mean, I think they have the three-point system, right. if I'm not mistaken. Um, but CSKA Moscow has 83 goals for and 43 against. That's now, still com- ridiculous. Compare that to Dynamo Riga, which uh, has... Who's at the bottom. Has, what is it, one win all year? They have one yeah, straight-up win and four overtime wins. They have 14 points in the standings to SKA's 79 and uh, 41 goals for, 83 against. But I think this is just one conference, Jesse. Can you go to the other one? Because I think it's even worse. Uh, I think the, go to league. Yeah. yeah, go to league. Okay, so SK is still in charge with 79 points. Go to the very bottom. Oh, it's no, still it's still Maria. Maria and last. Well, and Lada sucks, too. They got 23 points, 50 but look at the, goals for, 71 if, against. If you're looking at this, the goal differential is interesting with Dynamo Riga. 41 goals for the entire season and 83 against. <laughs> <laughs> 41 goals for compared to SKA who has 126 126 so so That's you insane so you have so is it a little bit easier to judge with something like say the SHL uh well, and, like and Swedish sorry, sorry to cut you off there but uh Shibachov, I believe is going back to SKA SKA <laughs> well he's good enough to play on them uh, they need him like they need a hole in the head that's that's crazy. Sorry, what were you saying? Um, well, no, I'm just saying is it you talk about like adjusted stats for the KHL and yeah. how it might be a little bit is the SHL like the Swedish Elite League is that better? I don't know. Let's check. Is the Swiss Elite League better? Well, no, let's not check now. That's boring. Let's yeah, not yeah. let's not do we that again. That. Yeah. Uh, but I just <laughs> I wondered if those imagine... if those stats are a little bit more even because there isn't as much money in Swedish hockey as there is in Russian. Well, yeah, but they have relegation and a much smaller league. Right. So I got. Is there like imagine... eight teams in the and... top? <laughs> It's like a dozen, 15, okay. something like that. Um, but yeah, they have relegation. I think if you're one of the bottom three teams, kind of like soccer, you get knocked down to the Allsvenska or whatever it is. Um, so it's a little more even. But the KHL has a team owned by a gas company mm-hmm. and Dynamo Riga. <laughs> so, so, so SKA has Datsuk and Kovalchuk. Yeah, they have Datsuk, <laughs> okay. Kovalchuk, um yeah, keep thinking it. Uh, why, why don't we just look it up? <laughs> have, Dahlman, Kevin Dahlman, I want to say, <laughs> who is a North American who's been playing there like his entire life and playing and really well. He's basically TJ Brennan. Like he, but you can get away with it over there, right? I'm surprised TJ Brennan hasn't given Europe a bigger shot. So Vadim Shipachov, according to Elliot Friedman, has told Vegas he wants his contract terminated so he can go back to Russia, and things will probably head in that direction. A couple of things have to be cleared up. If he does go back, he's got to pe- repay all but 86000 of the $2 million signing bonus he got. Woo! It's expected he will do that, uh, which has people assuming he already has a KHL job lined up. It will be interesting to see if the Golden Knights ask for a guarantee that he does not sign with any other NHL club under his current after his current contract is terminated. Uh, freed of the two-year, $9 million obligation, wouldn't it be a stunner if someone else tried to get him at a lower number? Uh, wouldn't wh- it be? Now, I looked at that and thought, yeah, there's a lot of teams that need center depth. Even if you start him, you warm him up at, at your third-line center and he moves up, like, what, what What could possibly go wrong? But you know who needs center depth? Vegas. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't Do get they? It. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they keep winning. And they almost, I mean, they almost had the Rangers last night. They were up, what, I think, 3-1 at oh one point. Oh, my God, Vigneault's so getting fired. I he's, don't think it's Vigneault's fault. Fu- we'll get no, to the it's Rangers. it's definitely not his fault. It's not he's his fault. He's so getting fired. Well, some, Sorry, I distracted from the yeah. original conversation. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> don't if, need first to give off, me much of an excuse. <laughs> if I'm Shipachov and I'm Shipachov's agent, there's no, no effing way I give Vegas $2 million back and then sign a guarantee that I can't sign with another NHL club. I just don't give them both. It's one or it's the mm-hmm. other. And the other thing is, um, you know, he's, it, it, people are saying he might be too late. So here, here's what Elliot had to say. He said, what went wrong 
More than one executive said Shipachov came over too late, age 30, and he missed his window. Other Russian players indicated he's not a workout fiend, and that might have had him behind when he arrived for camp. A younger player, or one without significant KHL options, may have gone to the AHL for a while to get up to speed. That's not what he wants, so it will take a few days to negotiate the exit. How how many times do I have to tell people that the KHL is a crazy place? It's not the same. It's not. It's just a, a different place, and he's not a workout fiend. Yeah, I believe it. That's that's <laughs> the league you go to. That's the league you go to when you're insanely when talented, you have insane talent, and don't want to do anything. <laughs> that's funny. I mean, it's not always the case, but it is often the case. Just saying. Just saying. <laughs> Radulov for a couple of years. Filatov was a great example, and there was a recent article about him where isn't that where Jaredaf lined it up and ended up too? Oh, and there's there's a fantastic example of all the talent in the world, and it sounded like he was a combination of lazy and nuts. Um, well, I, I think he got arrested a couple times. Maybe he had a couple Deweys. I don't mm. remember. Um, but uh, I don't remember where I was going with that. We're talking about players that aren't necessarily workout fiends. Oh yeah. Oh, Filatov. Sorry, there was an article written about him recently where he's. Like, I think he was just in the KHL All-Star game or something like that, or he was last year, and he's, like, he's an adult now. Mm-hmm. He's, he's not the kid that was drafted in, I want to say, 2008. Remember there was a big, uh, when the Leafs traded up to get Luke Shen, there was this huge debate, oh, they could have had Filatov. Yeah, well. Um, Nikita Gusev, who Vegas has rights to of the KHL. They do? Yeah. Um, I believe they got that from Tampa. Oh, that must have been in a trade. Um, probably now, you got to think, wouldn't come over, knowing what he knows. Um, not necessarily. I mean, I, I'm i confused as to why Vegas made the decision they did, frankly. But um, it, it, it did seem like even when he signed, when Chipachov signed that money for that money, it seemed like a lot. I Okay, here's what Vegas deserves to be criticized for. One minute he was worth four million. What was it? Four and a half. Four and a half. Four and a half million dollars. He was worth nine million dollars. He was worth. It was two years. A two million dollars signing bonus at that. Yes. So one day he was worth that, and one training camp and three NHL games later, he's not. He played thirty-two total minutes in the NHL. <laughs> okay, someone should get canned for that. Not McPhee, mm-hmm. unless it was his decision. Mm-hmm. But whoever pitched that the hardest should maybe get fired for that. That's ridiculous. How could he possibly, after 32 minutes, like you said, not be worth four and a half million dollars? Or even three? That's crazy. Oh, he's way past his prime. He's this, he's that. Well, then why did he get the money? Mm -hmm. That's nuts. Yeah, absolutely. Imagine if you made a blunder that big. If you told Kiss, oh, you got to sign this guy. You got to give him all this kind of money. He's really good, and then you bring him in. Doesn't even know how to operate the board. He's not necessarily a never pre- heard of Taylor Swift. Not necessarily a prep fiend. Like he doesn't like to go into a show with any sort of plan. Yeah, <laughs> Which, we just kind of watch the way, sports. Some DJs, by the way, are are good enough to do that. I'm not one of them. Um, but they the, never. The but it's interesting. KHLers? They never KHLers? seem to last. They're good enough for a while, but eventually, it's like working out. It comes back and it bites you. Mm-hmm. This is what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying. I, I don't understand that. But, um, I mean, if he was good enough, I think they would have kept him. Right. And it seems like he's clearly not. Um, if Gusev's good enough, I'm sure Vegas would love to have him. Mm-hmm. I'm sure he is. The Leafs got the rights to Tamu Hartikainen from the Oilers in some nothing trade. Hartikainen would have been a Leaf if he was good enough. He wasn't. So, I mean, that's it. It's that simple. Yeah. I, it's not deterring Ojigana from the Leafs. <laughs> Uh, Peter Shirelli. Oh my God! Is looking for the best, the most entertaining thing in the league right now. I think here's the here's the here's the headline. Yes, Peter Shirelli looking for offensive wingers internally and externally. Have you? You know, it's too bad the Oilers never had offensive wingers. Say, you know, like Taylor a, Hall or Jordan Everly. No, <laughs> no, it's funny. What's what's a more justifiable trade? Taylor Hall for Adam Larson or Jordan Eberle for Ryan Strom? Like, what's the I gotta tell you, I didn't like either, but of Jordan Eberle is 
I mean, it gave them some cap relief because they had Leon Dreisaitl coming in with the big money. Um, and it seemed like they weren't going to re-sign him anyway, so Strom kind of gives him an asset that potentially could rebound but hasn't yet. He's not fast. But it made their team that made the second round, almost the third round, worse. It so did. with Hall for Larson, you at least have Adam Larson. Like, yeah, that's at true. At least have a good player at a position of weakness. At very least, I mean, Taylor Hall, I would still say is better, but Mm -hmm. at very least, you get a player at a position of weakness. Um, Losing Everly for Strom? I don't know if there's much justification there. Mm, And talking about moving Nuge? No, you can't. Like, you can't afford that. You can't afford to lose him at center. I mean, what might solve a bunch of the Oilers' problems is moving Dry Saddle back to center. Yeah, it might be. I, honestly, I think so. And and now they're talking about Ryan Nugent Hopkins. Like, he's the guy that's next. To get dealt. Yeah. Well, and UC Jokinen, who they signed in the summer, and Anton Slepyshev. And they're shopping all these guys. Every single GM in the league should be calling up Peter Shirelli. Peter Shirelli, because he looks ready to do something dumb, something reactionary and dumb. Uh, well, I'm going to throw this at you. Mm-hmm. For for uh, reference, Oilers were supposed to be one of the top teams in the conference, right? Right out of the gate, that's what people people said they were going to be a Stanley Cup contender. Yeah, and they are without Andre Sakara. Fair enough, but being without Andre Sakara should not sink your whole year. St. Louis has twenty one points so far. The Oilers have seven. <laughs> They've played ten games. They are second last in the conference. Only the horrendously bad Arizona Coyotes. Are worse. Are they even worth worth talking about? Who the Coyotes? Yeah. No. Well, it's it's <laughs> I, you know that's <laughs> they're I can't believe they're as bad as they are. Well, and did you see the one game that they won? Yes. Did you? I didn't watch it. No. Why would I watch that yeah, game? Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> Man. Hey. Hey. Get get out of here. I gotta watch Flyers Coyotes. <laughs> um, no, dude. They're up three one with a minute to go. The Flyers tie it. Oh, no. And it goes to overtime, and I want to say Alex Goligoski won it in overtime. Oh, okay. But then they lose the next game. God, the Coyotes can really use a goalie. Um, how much of the Edmonton Oilers' struggles are on Cam Talbot, not standing on his head? Uh, I'm glad you added that <laughs> at the end. Like yes. that's How much of the Leafs' struggles are not Frederick Anderson standing on his head? Uh, the way the Leafs play defense, man, I'm surprised they've won as many games as they've had, they have this year. I really He had a good game. Best game of the season against the Sharks. Yeah. yeah. Easily. Yeah. Yeah. Easily. Well, it's and, painful. Painful to watch them in their own end. So what, what do the Oilers have? Three wins? Three wins, six losses, oh, one overtime yeah. loss. I, I saw one Oilers fan go, well, the reason they have three wins is because of Cam Talbot. Like, the reason they have even that many. Wow. Now, that's just one. And Goner. And, yeah. And a, a guy named game. McDavid. Who, who has what? How many points does Connor McDavid have? I don't know how many points does Connor McDavid have. Connor McDavid has. I think no, I he's got, like, what, season, five so. goals? Mm-hmm. Hold on. I, I mean, he's no Matthews. He's still, I mean, here's the thing. The team doesn't score goals. They have 22 all year. And to, to put that into perspective for you, the last place Arizona Coyotes have 33. You know, I read something. You ever read something you hate so much that you remember it for years? Yes. I believe the internet remembers Phil Castle Hot Talk. I, wow. <laughs> Connor McDavid has five goals and six assists. He has 11 points in 10 games. That's, that's wow. It's amazing. On He's second last above place a game. point a game. That's <laughs> unbelievable. Now, I read something in the hockey news in, I want to say, 2007. I remember reading it in the stroller rental room at the Toronto Zoo. And it was going through uh, pr- uh, projections of how much each player is going to score. Mm-hmm. And they went through one player on the Atlanta Thrashers by the name of Mark Savard. Okay. And they said he's going to be a good player and put up this many points, even though he's not that good or something along those lines. Because even on bad teams, someone has to score. Was the headline. Even on bad teams, someone has to score. No, they very do not. No, they don't. The reason they're bad is because no one's scoring. I mean, what, is is McDavid that guy? Even on bad teams, someone has to score? McDavid was on the ice, I think, for 30% of the team's goals. And it had something to do with, basically, his points had 30% of the team's goals last year. He is, just his goals alone, 
He's got five goals. The Oilers have 22 total. So it's about 30%. That's a little really over, bad. actually. So that's that's interesting, I think. And and well, no, sorry, it's a little under. That's twenty five percent. So it's maybe I, he might have twenty two percent of their goals. Who knows how long? But still, decide. anyway, it's it's kind of crazy. Now, one of the things that Elliot Friedman brought up, and again, because his 30, 30 thoughts just came out, thirty one thoughts, I have to bring this up. Pulley Arvey. Ah, again, they're lo- they're looking internally and externally for options. He might be, according to Elliot Friedman, Shirelli's most enticing trade chip. That's a big, big decision, and unless the Oilers are absolutely convinced it won't work for for Puliyarvi in Edmonton, you got to think the player that gets uh, um, the player might get it. Sorry, you've got to think the player gets another NHL shot. Excuse me, shot first. Boy, can you imagine so, Puliyarvi? Okay. Here's now people talk about everyone's getting traded by the Leafs and Leaf fans. Leaf fans, bleh. okay. Hmm? Let's take stock of everything we just talked about with the Oilers. Nuge might get traded. Mm-hmm. Slepeshev might get traded. Mm-hmm. Jokinen might get traded. Pooley <laughs> might get traded. And that's Elliot Friedman saying maybe. It's not. He's not saying it is. It's just he's saying maybe. I would love to know because he speculates, but when he's when he's just guessing, he is really careful about going guys. I'm totally just guessing. What was his exact wording there? One other big thing about Puliyarvi, he might also be Shirelli's most enticing trade chip. Because earlier in the paragraph, he talks about how, you know, he might get a shot because the Oilers aren't scoring and, you know, he's yeah. in the AHL and doing well and that sort of thing. But just based on the wording, that con- that that comment is guaranteed based off a conversation he had with at least one person. Has to be. He probably talked Why to another. He, he probably talked to another jet NHL general manager and said, "Okay, if you had to give up an asset to the Oilers, uh, who would you want?" You nailed it. And everybody's going to want it. him. I think mm-hmm. you nailed it. I think you got it. That's exactly what happened. And to me, so which shows you the the sh- deep shit Chirelli's in. Because if he wants to make his team better this year, it's going to cost him a third overall pick. Man, I don't think it's going to happen. Or if, a fourth overall. If I'm Colorado, no. Nuge for douche? <laughs> the the Danouche trade. Uh, <laughs> so um, the, yeah, no, if I'm Colorado, I'm looking at that. If I'm uh, Ottawa with uh, what they're going through with... Um, tourists, which we forgot about. Tourists. Yeah. Um, there's some guys that, you know, even the Leafs, like, I mean, <laughs> was it? Greg Wyshynski tweeted today, he's like, they should be, do JBR for RNH in a all, what do they call that? Um, all abbreviation Yeah, trade? all abbreviation trade, <laughs> oh, okay. which I thought was hilarious. But I mean, JBR would look good on a team like that. But n- then who's the Yeah, Nuge center? is not coming to the Leafs, that's my point. I, I, It's a joke, but it's also like, you know, they're looking for guys like that. They're looking for rental guys like that. I think, okay, by saying the Oilers' biggest trade trip, trade chip, is a guy like Pooley RV, you're looking at how incomplete that team is, right? And like, you don't trade yourself out of these situations. No. Man. You sit in your mess and deal with it. But if you have Dry Sidle as your second line center, you're looking pretty good. Because then you go McDavid, Dry Sidle, Hopkins, Strom. Then how you're happy. How similar are they to Montreal? Like they got some star power, mm-hmm. they got a really good goalie, suspect defense. But a couple guys who are decent. And a team where you go, if you just put this guy at center, it might solve some of your problems. Hmm. It's a very similar team. Oh, and they play in Canada. <laughs> let's, just, let's just keep it going. They, I think Edmonton's their fans high hate end, the Leafs. I think Edmonton's high end is higher than Montreal's, though. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know. They scored eight goals the other day. Eric Carlson. You know whose name is interestingly not come up in trade talks? Milan Lucic. You know why? <laughs> Because grit. Because you can't. No. Because <laughs> you Steve, can't trade no, that. Steve got it. Oh, grit. Yeah. Oh, because grit. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I don't think you can trade that contract, man. No, you can't trade grit. You can trade like, a guy. You can't like, give it up. You can trade a guy like Patrick Maroon, but then you have. What a do you void get for Patrick? Patrick Maroon? People keep asking me too. I keep <laughs> getting tweets about a third round pick. Like that was a fantastic trade by the Oilers. Sure. Yeah. yeah, but I'm, I might. Okay, so people are asking me about Tyler Bozak because if, if he's struggling. So therefore, in Toronto, oh, we got to trade him. Now, um, <laughs> uh, I've never said such a thing. Oh, we've yeah. all been there, but whatever. Um, the point with Bozak is, people are like, "Well, could, could we trade him for a defenseman?" No. Okay. Or another center. Yeah, but who? No. That's who? my point. Who? Who? 
Who's he going to be? Well, I, and I saw the suggestion maybe Bozak for Shipachov. Again, because of the KHL numbers, he's literally magic beans. Like, yeah, you no. don't know no. what he is. There, Bozak for Shipachov. I, I don't know. He might have NHL talent, but to say for sure he's better or worse than Bozak, how the hell do you know? No, and why would you Could trade be? a known commodity for a guy that's on the outs with his team? I'm sorry, that's a risk you just don't need Unless to take. Unless you're really confident in your scouting abilities. Yeah, I don't know. I would really go that's over just, that, those 32 minutes. There's very few wins there. And you got to look at your wins when you're trading. Like, right. here's here's Bozak. Okay, so is he underperforming right now? Sure. But can he perform like he did last year? Yes, he absolutely can. And we've seen that season after season after season. He's good for 50 points. This line needs the one. one. <laughs> or th- and it's funny that I still refer to it as this line. I think they're going to be together again. JVR, Bozak, Marner. They need a big game. They need one big game and, and just kind of get get that swagger. They get rolling. Here. Yeah. Um, to your McDavid point, it reminded me of something I saw on Twitter from Third Period Suits. Matthews Nylander have been on the ice for forty four percent of Toronto's <laughs> five on five goals for. Wow. To contrast, they've been on the ice for ten percent of Toronto's five on five goals against. Wow. They are. Really good. So they're talking. We're talking about. I mean, it's it's again. It's the it's how many uh, it's how many goals you score. It's great, but how many goals are scored against when you're on the yeah, ice? The best right? offense is a good defense, and the best defense is a good offense. So the message is clear in New York. The Rangers are ready to restock. They got a bunch of uh, free agents coming up here, including Rick Nash. They mm-hmm. traded Derek Stepan and Anti Ranta, um, and I guess are excited about a couple things going on. Um, now there's there's talk about Alan Vigneault. And that's definitely a great example of a coach getting fired because it seems like the what it just seems like what you do when well, your team starts I, bad. I wanna, I wanna talk like, about that's that. That's definitely one of the best coaches in the league. Because yeah, because here's the thing. I think we all knew the Rangers were gonna fall off at some point. And it doesn't mean they won't come back. I no. But no, I no. Oh, no. come on, we did. For I sure. Knew they got all, I knew Lundqvist was going to fall off. All, the, that, all that needs to happen is for him to fall off, and the team's not good anymore. I guess you're right. But like they got Brendan Smith at the trade deadline last year. They re-signed him, and they signed Kevin Shattenkirk in the summer. Mm-hmm. They shouldn't be this bad. Almost losing to Vegas' fourth-string goalie bad. <laughs> they got 10 points this year. They're 4, 7, and 2. Um, hey. Again, it's game 13 for them. Sorry, you want to talk about the Rangers. Well, what did you want to go to? Okay. Vegas could really use Calvin Pickard back. How do you think that conversation would go? Hey, quiet. we really want our goalie back. Okay, well... We... I think they would trade for literally any other goalie. We'll take Brendan Leipzig. Yeah. Uh, yeah, wouldn't that be... Wow! Yeah. Although I wouldn't do that because he then he has to clear waivers and then he's sitting on the... Like, oh, yeah, you know right. what I mean? Like, Or, you know... I, for them, I would be like, okay, let's let's talk about Nate Schmidt. Well, yeah, that's what Justin Bourne said. Like, could you offer Sparks or Pickard and get Nate Schmidt in return? I just don't think. I don't think goal, they goalies aren't considered valuable enough for that. Like, it would have to be goalie plus. Yeah, I'm fine with goalie plus. Get Nate Schmidt. <laughs> yeah, the Leafs got Pickard for a sixth and Tobias Lindbergh. They're not getting Nate Schmidt. Come on now. Although, I don't know. Hey, I like the dream too. You guys don't like the dream? I like the dream. You, you never stare at the clouds? Um, I'm, uh, huh? So, yeah, the Rangers, I feel like, why Why would you trade, or why would you fire Ella, Ella and Vigneault when you knew, at some point, this was going to end? <laughs> but, again, it's just... That's not... Isn't this just what happens? Yeah, eventually, your team starts sucking, you fire your coach, and then you reset. Yeah. Unless you're the Montreal Canadiens being stubborn, like, <laughs> for, like, five years or something like that with but, Michelle Terrian. I guess like, my question is, why does it have to be that way when this is very clearly not an Alan Vigneault problem? Hockey is a very stubborn sport, and it's just kind of what happens when you start poorly. Look at the Kings. Yep. Yeah, but they, you're, you're right. You know what? And the Kings did need a shake-up. You're right. Just I just, shake it up. Just shake the it Rangers up. score, the Rangers had over 100 points last year, were 13 games into the season, and now his job's on the line? When the Ducks fired Carlisle, they didn't want to do it. But it's just what you do. Yeah. And now he's back. <laughs> you know why he's back? Because when they fired him, it's just what you do. See, that's silly to me. If you have a great asset like a great coach, 
that that you know it isn't the coach's thing. It's lack of talent. It's talent getting older. It's people leaving in free agency, and you got to restock. Keep the coach. Yeah, I don't Co- think either of us disagree with it's silly, but it's just the way hockey works. I think most GMs <laughs> would tell you it's silly, but yeah. they're compelled to do it. It's <laughs> it's the turkey dump with coaches. It's so when silly. it's when your coach gets dumped like in the heart of winter mm. that you can tell something crazy is going on. Like Montreal last year. And they won the division somehow. And uh, the Leafs with Carlisle. Like, if you get fired in, like, late December, January, February, something like that, that's If you get left crazy. out on the side of the road and you got to wait for your Uber while press asks you questions, then there's something wrong. Yeah. That was a turkey dump, right. wasn't it? Yeah. It was that a turkey dump. That was, uh, like, right around American Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. Okay, boy. And doesn't he, he's got to be a front runner for the Jack Adams. Oh, oh this year? Yeah. Well, 13 he's, games. I know, <laughs> but I know. man, if they, right make, now, if they make the playoffs, uh, yeah, yeah. how does he not win? If he make if they make yeah. the playoffs, how does he not win? Yeah, Matthews should Gerard be Gallant, in that the is. Selkie conversation. He should be know. in the Hart Trophy conversation. It, exactly. Why not both? <laughs> because it's November first. Yeah, exactly. And we're not. Oh, <laughs> remember last year, the Leafs had two wins in October. So let's just not get too ahead of ourselves, right? So they I, made the playoffs. I. Uh, it's funny. I hate. Hockey pools, but mm-hmm. I've actually been sort of paying attention a little bit because I helped out Mrs. Dangle with hers. Steven Stamkos has over 20 points. Oh, that's insane. Stop. Stop Him and Kucherov right together now. are just just lethal. Yeah, lethal. I, we've we've talked about Matthews, Nylander, and Hyman being the best line of the league. Mm, no. One of. <laughs> one of. <laughs> no, no, no. It's that it's that three-headed monster of Stamkos, Kucherov, and the luckiest man on earth, <laughs> Vladimir Mestikov. Now, I wonder if, uh, was it the other day? Well, I think you it was have the f- in a pool, don't you? I do have in my league, Brilliant yeah. Brilliant bastard. That was the first, um, that. It's also not pool. I don't play hockey er, pools. Fantasy. I play in a, I play in a fantasy league. Uh, There's a yeah, yeah. I'm, um, not, I'm not a I'm not a teacher at some elementary school. I think it was the other day that it was the first. <laughs> she got Vasilevsky off waivers. I saw. Oh, it. <laughs> solid day. He's not real. He's got like 11 <laughs> wins or something. He's got like it's ridiculous. It's hilarious. She got the first goalie pick, and you're only allowed to have one. We I told her to pick Cam Talbot because I didn't think they'd be this bad. And I'm like, okay, even if Talbot gets back on his feet, he's not going to beat Vasilevsky. So no. drop him. <laughs> you only have to have one goalie? Yeah, it's, not, yeah, it's right. not a smart pool and apparently not full of smart people because <laughs> Vasilevsky was on waivers, not because someone dropped him, but because he was never drafted. Which is ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. Sorry, where were we going? Uh, I wanted to say that I think it was a, the other day was the first game all season that one of Kucherov and Stamkos didn't score a goal for Tampa. Like, I think it took 13 or 14 games for that to happen. Isn't that insane? That's You know how good of a goal scorer Kucherov is? He turned Steven Stamkos into a playmaker. <laughs> it's true. He's like one of the league leaders. I, he might be the league leader in assists. Um, so I want to talk, I want to run through the conferences here for just a second. I want to run through the bottom half of the conferences thus far. Again, we are one month in. No, this should be fun. I haven't looked at the standings once this season. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn this away oh, from you. Sure. Well, my glasses. I want you to count the playoff teams that are currently on the outside looking in right now. Okay. Okay. So at number nine in the Eastern Conference, we have Detroit. Okay. Number 10, we've got Boston. That was a playoff team. Number 11, Washington. Playoff team. Number 12, Carolina. Nope. Number 13, New York Rangers. Playoff team. Number 14, Florida Panthers. Nope. Number 15, Montreal Canadiens. Playoff team. And last place, the Buffalo Sabres. So there's four playoff teams looking out on uh, on the right. outside looking in. So let's have a look at the Western Conference. Okay. Starting at number nine, the su- still surprising Colorado Avalanche. Yeah, all right. Um, Nashville. There's a playoff team. Chicago. There's a playoff team. Calgary. Playoff team. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Minnesota. Playoff team. Edmonton. Playoff team. And the Coyotes. <laughs> it's like the NHL just went, okay, we're going to flip everybody yeah, hey, now. We're just going to, wow, that's nine teams. Nine playoff More teams. More than half of the playoff teams. After the first month are not are not in it. November. November, November yeah. November one. <laughs> Again, I just think that's, I just looked at the standings and was like, oh my God. No, it's pretty crazy. Well, and even a few of the teams who were off to hot starts, I thought, or at least surprising starts, are on uh, on the outside looking in, it's, I'm surprised Colorado's not in a playoff it, spot. It's so funny with the Blues. The uh, they're they're the team that we all thought they were last year, this year. 
Boy, the <laughs> like sharks if... and blues are just so interchangeable. <laughs> like, always a favorite. Yeah. Always. And they never, never. <laughs> sharks at least made the final. Yeah, the sharks almost. Yeah. Recently. Oh, the they were, and they, they were the favorite. By the way, where was the Roman Polak video tribute? I think that was awfully rude of San Jose. That was very rude. He took them all the way to the finals. You know what's funny is, I mean, you got to shoot your shot, right? And Sharks did, and they came very close. But um, they look poised to maybe make some noise again and potentially go deep again. You know what would be really nice to have right now a few of the Sharks? Your 20, 18, and 19 second-round picks. (laughs) Did they give those to the Leafs? Or here, check cap friendly. I can't remember when it was. But no, the Leafs got two second round picks for Polak. Oh, oh God, that's I, outstanding! Really? I know, I know. Well, and then there was that whole thing about well, just combine the two trades or whatever. But oh, uh, the Freddie Anderson thing. It was either twenty seventeen and no, eighteen. No, Freddie or Anderson. 20, what am I talking about? Jesus. Eighteen and nineteen. Mm, trying to remember. Jesse's bringing it up. To San Jose was Rowan Polak and Nick Spalling. Ah, Leafs great Nick Spalling to Toronto. Second round pick, 2017, and 2018 second round pick. I think, oh, okay. they, did they trade this 2017 second round pick? I don't remember. Uh, I think, didn't that go for Brian Boyle? Oh, maybe. Somebody drafted Maxime Comtos. How do you, Comtos? Comtos? Comtois. Comtois. Maxime Comtois. Oh, he's from Quebec. That makes sense. Oh, what a shock. Yes. <laughs> uh, who did draft him? <laughs> They're looking things up right Anaheim. now. Anaheim. So we traded away to Anaheim. To Freddie. For Freddie. There you go. Part oh, of the Freddie deal. Oh, and we also got Rafi Torres in that deal. Ah, oh, Leafs yeah. great Rafi Torres. Forgot about that. Leafs uh, great. <laughs> um, other, uh, another interesting team. We got to give them their shout outs. Vancouver. Still there. Still there. And by the way, not still there. Fourth in the conference. They're younger, faster. And a coach shakeup. Was it? And a goalie. And a goalie, yeah. Steve, was it you who said that there's just been a bunch of teams that just said, hey, let's just go young and fast and see how it goes? And New and, Jersey. And it's kind of works. <laughs> Why not? Like, yeah. it's a copycat league. I think, I mean, even though the Leafs didn't actually win anything last year, a bunch of teams went, all right, let's try it. Yeah. Which, I mean, the Leafs making the playoffs last year was such good news for hockey, like, in that, like, a lot of teams seem to be reluctant to rebuild. Because, like, you need to win because you need to... Keep people coming. Yeah, you need to sell yeah. tickets. But it was proof that, okay, tough it out. You'll get better. Can tough I, it out, the wins will come. Um, first off, I want to say New Jersey, second in the conference right now behind Tampa Bay. Have not that's, slowed down. That's crazy. Have not Young slowed down. Young and fast. Let's see how it works. Yeah, absolutely. It's yeah. worked for them. But here's... I have a question about well, that. So the NHL changed the way your percentage points last year... About of getting the the first overall pick because it used to be they changed it again. Well, yeah, didn't last year it changed yeah, again. Yeah, so they changed it and then it gets progressively worse. So it got like slightly better. It got worse last year and then this draft will be a slightly worse and like, that'll be where it's set. We know Vegas is lottery sense? protected, but essentially where the Leafs had a twenty percent shot at a first overall pick, I think it's going to be like fifteen. By the yeah. way, people kept tweeting me they couldn't find evidence that Vegas had a lottery protected pick. No, maybe maybe I'm wrong. Then I thought I, I heard that. Because, no, you did. And I'm pretty sure we all did. I want to say someone came on our show and said it. I want to say CJ. We'll look that up. Yeah, we will. Okay. So forget I said that because we don't know for sure. Because now I'm doubting myself. It sounds right, though. It does. And, <laughs> and if I were Vegas and I paid a billion dollars to get in the league, I would or want lottery-protected freaking picks. Um, yeah, seriously. But regardless of that, I think I'm really against the NHL stopping rebuilds. The NHL currently is making it harder for you to rebuild. There's been some pretty embarrassing ones in recent memory, though. Just because teams aren't good at it doesn't mean they won't eventually be. But imagine you, imagine your team just through dumb bad luck. You know, like dumb bad luck or dumb good luck, the Oilers got a billion first-round picks. Now, they weren't able to turn those in anything because they couldn't draft anything past the first round. But why are we making it hard on a bad team to get good again. And my argument is, the longer a bad team is bad, the less fan support you're going to have. So you want them to be at the bottom of the league the least amount of time possible. Why are we making it harder? Who is responsible for lockouts? Is it players? I would say no. 
Is it owners? Well, lock, walkouts are players, like when they strike. Yeah. But a, an owner, it, that's the thing. Is it, It's either a strike, because sometimes there's, there's a difference, right? There's a strike, and then there's the lockout. Lockout's owners. Right. So, I'm okay, well, I'm, uh, play stoppages. Okay. Or work stoppages, whatever. Because uh, I am going somewhere with this. A big reason why the NHL makes all these rule changes and there's lockouts is because GMs are crazy. Now, sometimes it's the owner... Using the GM and going, we need to win games. And, you know, so the GM's decisions aren't necessarily theirs. But a lot of it is the GM's. Um, They're changing the draft rules because GM's got crazy when it came to the rebuild. They uh, Who got crazy? Buffalo, Toronto. I'm going to go with Buffalo. Even Toronto. (sighs) I mean, who got crazy? Two teams? Is that is that worth it? And that's the thing. Like, let's say let's say you're in a small market. Let's say let's say Carolina. Just say Carolina, okay? Not because Carolina hasn't drafted well. They absolutely have. And we know that you need to draft beyond the first round to create a great team, which they've done. I think um, they haven't proven it fully yet, Not but yet. I still think they're going to be a very strong, strong Their team. Their game against the Leafs. Wow. I it's. This season, I've looked at teams and gone, wow, they're good. Carolina was the only team I saw where I was like, I want no part of them in a playoff series. Right, right. So my my question is, why are we penalizing teams for having building a strategy to rebuild? We've we've like they finally figured out a strategy to go. Here's how we can get better faster. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to take one in the dunk tank for a year or two. And then all of a sudden, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get some new, exciting young players. We'll be able to sell tickets based on hope. And even if we don't make the playoffs, we still have Jack Eichel. A lot of guys, a lot of teams can't sell tickets based on hope, I would think. Like, okay, you think the 14, 15 Sabres sold tickets? Well, no. Based on hope? Like, I want to I want to know. But like, I mean, but the 16, 17 Sabres did. That's my one point. Thing, one thing numbers? I always hear about Vancouver as a, as a city and as a market is when their team's not winning, they don't go. I think if you told if they told them, hey, we're going to go through a rebuild, they won't go to the game. But under this system, they'll be worse longer. I we're all in agreement that tanking and rebuilding is the right move. But what what's wrong with being business savvy about that? And but there's but, a bottom line, and I bet ticket won't. sales tank with the team. Mm-hmm. Okay, for one year. But what if they're bad for five? You can't. You can't even risk it for the year. You got to try and make the perception that okay, we're trying to win all the time. That we're trying to go for it. We're trying to win, and that's how you'll sell tickets. Uh, see, I don't. I. I totally. I. I know what you're saying. No, I. I, d- I disagree with what I'm saying. Yeah, but that's the that's mind the of the the owner of the team. If you <laughs> you're running a business. If yeah. you have poor five poor years, it does work. It does. So much damage to your reputation, and we've seen it here. Uh-huh. It was it a borderline for the first time in my life on apathy here, which is the worst thing you can have. Oh, there how were can tons you, of empty seats in Toronto? How tons. can you? They were all spoken for, but there were tons of empty seats. I, I just don't understand when you have the one tool. You got one example of a team actually turning it around really quickly, and I think that team's the Leafs. They turn it around quicker than a lot of people thought that uh, than anybody re- really could have thought. I wonder how much the Oilers play in that. They can't. Huh. They can't. The Oilers were already bad. They didn't try to be bad. They were actually trying to be good. They thought they had the talent to be good, but they were terrible. I just think, like, and that's why they got Connor McDavid. They got him because they were legitimately bad. Holy smokes, does Rasmus uh, Dolan look good? He does. I just, I, I don't understand this from a business perspective. If I'm a, if I'm a team like Detroit, yeah. actually Detroit's doing a lot better than we thought, but let's say Detroit is, at what we, you know, so let's say it all evens out and Detroit's as bad as we think they are, or Arizona. Caps what if Arizona so has nice. to pick seventh or tenth? What kind of bullshit is that? I mean, well, and what, they're not what even hope, trying to be this bad. <laughs> no, what hope could they possibly have? And that's the problem. Don't penalize a team that's already bad. On that note, Adam, how long until Arizona talks about firing someone big? Rick Talk had just got there. Um, I think Rick Talk could easily be the guy that's fired. It's almost like a Todd Richards situation in Columbus. John Chaka? I don't Man. think he should be. They are so they're so I'm much still a fan, I don't think Rick Tockett was the the right coaching hire. I think they I I believe they wanted Sheldon Keefe. Um and he was one one of the guys. One of the guys. I don't think he was the right hire. Like I don't think he was the right I mean it's very clear either his systems haven't taken form or they're not good enough. How either way, that's a failure as a coach. Their goaltending is very bad. Their goaltending's bad. Yeah. It wasn't good to begin with, and then guys got hurt. 
They have 33 goals for, which is somewhat respectable. That's pretty good. Uh, like like the Canucks only have 31 Ish. for, that's but they have 56 Ish. scored against. Wow! So maybe that's the problem right there. You're right. I have a question about rebuilds. Yeah. Well, they, they get Scott Wedgwood and they win a game. So he's... Scott Wedgwood. At one point he was highly touted. Sorry. What wow. if uh, you try and rebuild and it doesn't work? Like it didn't work in Edmonton. Because you have to suck, and uh-huh. then you have to suck in the right year. Then the GM is still ruining. The, then it's the, the GM's. At least it's the GM's fault. No, but maybe it's just not his fault because he wasn't bad the right year. Like, no, that's bullshit. Like you should. There's good players in every draft, mm-hmm. right? You're not going to get McDavid or Matthews every single draft, but tanking is always the good idea. And if your scouts are good, you'll always find players. Mm-hmm. So if you didn't find players in a particular draft, you know. Like, teams hiding behind, well, 2012 was a weak draft, and we got Yakupov, and we mm-hmm. got Galch. And no, it's your fault. Galch scored 30 goals. So you can, you're, you're mismanaging Galch. So Edmonton yeah. should have been better before McDavid got there. Yes. yes. Were they yeah. four first overall oh picks? Oh, my and, God. Edmonton's biggest problem is they couldn't draft outside of the first round. Who did they draft in the second round that ever made the team? Go to HockeyDB and look at their draft record from 2008 onward and how many players played... Any amount of real NHL games, like 200 NHL fun. game plus. <laughs> yeah. But but what's going to be funny is count how many of the guys um, played but not for their team. So, yeah, go all the way down to 20, 2008. Yeah, 20. I don't want to touch your computer. Trust me on that one. Uh, okay, Everly, 519 games Already. in 2008. Uh, their other guys played one game, two games, and 52 games. One of those being Leaf Legend, Tamu Hartikainen. Okay, <laughs> 2009, at 10th overall, they get uh, Magnus Payarvi Svensson, or Payarvi, whatever you want to call him. 321 games. I'm pretty sure the majority of those weren't with the Oilers. Uh, and uh, in the second round, they got Anton Lander, 215 games, which I'm surprised he's even played that much. Their two third-round picks, their two fourth-round picks, and their fifth-round pick, zero. zero. Let's go to 2010. Taylor Hall, 463 NHL games, uh, most with the Oilers. Tyler Pitt, like 70 games. Martin Marinson, 175. Mm-hmm. Mostly I, with the I, Leafs. <laughs> I think that's half and half, yeah. Uh, someone played one game, zero, zero, one. And Brandon Davidson, and I want to say half of those are with Montreal. All right, let's go to 2011. Their first round pick, Ryan Nugent Hopkins. First round picks are easy. If you bomb mm-hmm. a first round pick, you suck. Uh, Ryan Nugent Hopkins, 405 games, all with the Oilers. Oscar Clefbaum, mm. also in the first round, 19th overall, 199 games. He looks great. Yeah. And then you got Musil at four games, zero games, zero games, three games. Tobias Reeder, 247 games, but he's not with the Oilers anymore. Uh, 2012, Yakupov, 303, zero. Juhar Kara is at 31 games. I mean, he's he's a new guy. We're starting to get to, well, they weren't drafted that long ago territory. And then Eric Gustafson. I've never even heard of that guy. Who's he with? <laughs> Click on that. The Blackhawks, because of course. By the AHL. Oh, but he hasn't even, yeah, he's played in the AHL. So, okay, nuts to that. 2013, Darnell Nurse. Oh, now we're really Great getting pick. into their kind of new territory. And then zero games, one game, 59 games in Slepeshev, who apparently they want to trade, followed by zero, 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 and zero. How many picks do they have in 2013? One, two, that's three. That's still, by four, the way, five, 2013 six, is four years seven, ago. Eight, yeah. Those players nine, are 22 ten. now. Yeah. But that's 10 players, man. But if you have a guy, they're playing. Yeah. <laughs> now, 2014, it's starting to get not fair. Well, you because you got Dreisaitl and then no one else. 2015, you got McDavid and then no one else. And then 2016. Get, but still, look at some of the names. Are there any of those names highly touted? William, what is it? Uh, no, but there's like a bunch of second rounders in here is what I'm saying. Like, they should be highly touted. Actually, what the hell was going on in these years? 2015. Caleb Jones? They didn't after, have a, any seconds or thirds. Both years. And in 2014, they didn't have any seconds or thirds. What the hell happened there? I don't know. Why? You're the Oilers. You should have had all years. the draft picks. Yeah, you sucked. That's a 31st See, that, pick. They traded away. That's... That's essentially, <laughs> essentially, well, it's now a first rounder, but essentially was a first rounder. That's insane. This boy, is the oh kind boy, of stuff that, bad. listen, at, at the in in the Oilers' case, the rebuild was the Oilers' fault. They had terrible management. Okay. They were run by former they players that didn't playoffs. know what they were doing. We know that for eleven years. 
That's not the system cheating you. That's you exactly. stink. And that's not the that's so therefore not the reason that the NHL should be changing up the lottery rules. Yeah. Also, those guys they we're we're talking about a team like the Coyotes, for example, who could really use the first overall pick, potentially not getting it. The Oilers got it. <laughs> Four times. Four times! And it's, they didn't get it right until the fourth time. <laughs> when it was McDavid. When it, they didn't have a choice. <laughs> you didn't you couldn't possibly screw this up. Even if you lost your mind and got Jack Eichel. Like it, at least you would have Jack Eichel. Mm-hmm. It's still the Oilers' number one center. Like it's, it's crazy. Absolutely not. All I'm saying is it you should I would want to make a highway to make bad teams good again as fast as possible. I'd want to put in an express lane. But once a bad team is good, then a good team is bad. Not necessarily. It just might mean the teams are... It's like it's a little bit more competitive, this league, I it's would think. It's interesting. But how much parity do you want? You're, well, the NHL seems to want a lot of it. Yeah, that's You're true. battling <laughs> between business sense, which would be, yes, definitely prop up the bad teams. And also, we got to remember, it's a sports league, and there's got to be like some competitiveness and... You know, there, there's, it can't be, you How can't many teams promote, you can't award being shit, which I think is what the NHL is That's trying how to the avoid. draft is set up, though. It's, yes, and they're looking at it and going, should we change this? We shouldn't award teams for being okay, shit. Okay, so then you're going to penalize teams for being shit, which is even worse. No, that's you're like not saying no, no, you're it's just like eating saying there's the field. here's okay, when I was in grade 1, I was behind on my reading. My 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 kindergarten school didn't teach me how to read. Whereas the school I was at? <sighs> what? Yeah, I didn't know how to read coming out of kindergarten and and apparently you're supposed to do that and my <sighs> So the school, that explains a so lot. So the school yeah. I went to, the school I went to <laughs> I don't know how long divided. Have I mentioned that? <laughs> Leo Komarov scored Sorry. School I went to <laughs> realized this and goes, okay, well, we're going to put you in reading recovery, mm. so we're going to get you caught up. Instead of saying, sorry, kid, not only are we it's not going to teach you to read, we're not even going to give you no, fucking it's, books. It's, it's the is, exact no, same. it's the exact same. <laughs> this is a pretty good, I think that's a pretty good comparison. No. <laughs> no. Why is it not? Teaching a child how to read in a professional Guys, sports league. Guys, the point is, if there's, a, if there's a team that's behind, if there's a person that's behind, why wouldn't you let them? Because, them? You could, because you're competing against that other person to win a championship and make money. Yeah. Uh, that, that, are you competing with the other kids in your class to win the reading championship? Fuck yeah. And I did win it. So fuck you. But also, How many millions are on the line in your reading also, championship? Also, I think none of the point. Can you imagine one of Adam's fellow kindergartners being like, uh, why is he getting special treatment? <laughs> this is bullshit. I'm the, trying to read better. Why, Excuse what is me. with Adam's special advantage here? <laughs> like, but that's my point, is that if... There's a difference between professional sports and society. If someone's hurting, you should help them. The NHL professional owners... sports, go fuck yourself. The NHL <laughs> owners act like a group, right? Or they're supposed to. Mm. They're supposed to. They... For bi- on times. For business things, the point is to have a good business. To have a good business, you want to have a team that at very least you can sell hope. But at right? the end of the day, your business is yours. And you don't really care about the rest of the right. NHL if you're but making money. But if you are making money and you're making piles of money... Have you ever heard of those equalization payments? Man, I hate making those equalization payments. You know why? Because there's teams that are shit that aren't making money that I have to pay for. That's, I don't think the draft lottery is going to change much of that. Sorry, Jesse. Um, I, I was, I was the reason at- the Coyotes don't make money and the reason that they haven't been able to make money is because they've never had a good solid team in a good solid arena. I, you know what I Give remember? them the opportunity to be good. What I also. remember a few years ago when Mike Smith decided to destroy Worlds and the Coyotes <laughs> made the Western Conference final. Yeah, I remember that. That building was sold out. Absolutely it was. was sold out. Also, the correct answer to all of this, you take the teams that didn't make the playoffs and you play a single elimination tournament during the other playoffs and then the winner of that tournament gets first overall. I love that idea. The KHL tried something like that. And? It was called the Cup of Hope. Uh, <laughs> really? Yes. <laughs> really? Awesome. Yeah. Why not? But it, it had nothing to do with draft picks. It was just, I, I guess it was just games for, the KHL is bizarre. So your contract runs until the end of April. So if you didn't make the playoffs, there are teams that will make you show up anyway and just practice. Oh, uh, because the contract's still going, yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> I guess they figure, well, we're paying these guys. Like, why not make some ticket sales? And Dynamo Riga won one year. So they their final game was a win and nice. had a trophy <laughs> and they didn't even make the playoffs. See, that's awesome. With starting goalie Michael Telquist. 
Oh, wow. So if you Leafs have great your, Michael Duckwood. If you have your little tournament to determine the first overall pick, you can't suck that much. See, I love that. Because you have to play. I, I am with you. I love that idea. Let and at go. least that it sells more tickets. No, exactly. and you get to you get to sell fake playoff tickets, dude. I love that idea. And GMs imagine will... it's a, like it's like a fight, it's like a uh, March Madness. Yes. Yeah, like, oh lockout. my god, how exciting! Yeah. What player though gives a flying shit about that? They should. GMs it's your team. Win. It's your team. Mm. Yeah. What if I'm a player on an expiring deal? What call, if I'm a, call up your AHL guys. I'm sorry. What do you do for a living? <laughs> oh, that's right. You fucking play hockey. Strap on your fucking skates and get out there. I agree with you, yeah. but a lot of guys. Okay, imagine now. So, okay, the NHL got a, into a big to do about the Olympics, and one of the primary reasons was they send their players over there. John Tavares gets hurt, season ending injury. Hmm. Imagine you're a player and you're set. Imagine the Leafs don't make the playoffs. And but JVR still scores thirty goals, and he's heading into the summer, and he's supposed to get this enormous payday. And they're playing in this goofy <laughs> first overall pick tournament, and he blows out his knee. That's how the game works. I'm sorry. He could blow, but he could also blow out his knee on game eighty one. Yeah, eighty one. Yeah, but yeah. he didn't. Yeah, what and Steve, he plays game he's already scored fine. his thirty goals. NHL GMs are dumb. You just said it. They'll yeah. sign him anyway. You're right. We signed Stefan Robida when he broke in two legs in the previous year. We, we broke each leg. Each leg. I, I got I always forget. That that also, happens. you you pay them like it's playoff money. So the further you go, your team gets more money. Because you don't actually get paid for the playoffs. I, I right? freaking love that. Absolutely. Polak was the second right handed defenseman in recent memory where they're like, well, I know he has a broken leg, but he does <laughs> shoot right, so we're going to go ahead and bring him on yeah, in. They're right. like, we yeah. need to get heavier back yeah. there. At least they didn't give him a three year deal. I know. I'm just saying. Some like that to me is brilliant. Now, the NHL is a lot of the times anti entertainment, even mm-hmm. though they're in an entertainment league. That's the whole point. So they would never do that. But I feel like you do that for five years and you sort of normalize that tournament. The first year, there'd be a bunch of uproar. Yeah. And you keep doing that, though, and it becomes a, a, a part of the game. And you give the guys going into the playoffs maybe a week off so they can kind of rest up, makes the first round more competitive. So you get the little kind of fun tournament. For the first overall pick, mm-hmm. and then you go into the playoffs with teams that have, you know, have had some injuries, and now they're healed up, and now you get a little bit more of a fair fight too. So the playoff teams love it because they get time to recover, dude. This as, is great, Jesse Blake. Why, you're a genius. Why aren't we running the NHL? We should be. We'd be in the Olympics. The, the, we were the, running the NHL. Be like, doo, 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 doo. <laughs> that would be us running the NHL. But um, the Leafs seem to win every year. <laughs> it's almost like it's rigged. The That's Leafs true. have 18 straight Stanley Cups. Wait a second. So they new rule: Leafs always get the first overall pick. <laughs> Second roll: the Leafs win. Second. <laughs> Imagine you beat the Leafs and you get fined. There's a, there's a way to make money for the league. No, oh, what? Fine. <laughs> you beat them 6-3, you're double fine. Hey, do you want to hear something? Do, 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 do. Yes, I want to hear something. Do, 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 um, do, do, do. So here's, it's a very NHL thing too. Kay Whitmore, NHL's goaltending supervisor, has been ordered to return $384,000 in profits from a Ponzi scheme. What? Justice Gordon Weatherhill also found that Whitmore struggled during his cross-examination to provide a logical reason for why he was content to have the repayments of his principal paid directly into his bank account, but requested that the fee payments be sent to him in his home in Ontario in the form of bank drafts in increments of $10,000. He said it was incomprehensible that Whitmore would not have questioned why he received no tax documents from a guy uh, he, uh, with whom he is making money. So the whole background of this story is really, really interesting. Is that tax evasion? Wh- okay, so who is this guy? Goaltending. Kay Whitmore was a former Canucks goalie. He's now the head of goaltending at the NHL. Okay. So he had. So a guy named. What um, goes into being that? Uh, Probably like BC public pads, notary Rashida Samji was sentenced to six years in prison after she was found guilty on 14 counts of fraud relating to 284 named investors and companies who were led to believe their money was being invested in a winery. Creditors of Samji's estate, including investors who lost money in the scheme, are now going after those who made money, including Whitmore. According to the BC Supreme Court documents, Whitmore, who is now uh, the NHL goal- supervising goaltender, initially invested six hundred grand uh, on the premise that it would be a six-month investment that would pay out about seven point five percent. He received his first payment of forty-five grand. Two weeks later, five thousand dollars in a form of nine bank drafts uh, each. So five thousand dollars each. Anyway, so basically, it's very Ponzi how sc- I get paid by the KHL. It's Ponzi scheme, <laughs> but he made money off the Ponzi scheme. 
He's one of the guys that, that made money yeah. because he was actually paid back. But did he know it was a Ponzi scheme? Well, they, okay, See, so the, so they're saying again, as I read, the, the justice in the case says he struck, he, he said, there's no way, he said, I find it incomprehensible that Whitmore would not have questioned why he received money, yet no tax documents, mm. right? Because you got to get, you got to, you if you're making $384,000 in six months, <laughs> Give me some tax documents there. You're going to have to pay some tax, especially in Canada, especially in BC where the taxes are a little higher. Well, okay. Now, my question is, and maybe you're both about to tell me I do my taxes wrong, and that would be very concerning, but if you make money and you don't get the documents, when you file your taxes, you just tell them, by the yeah. way, I also made X amount of dollars. Yeah, yeah. That's what I did with the KHL. Do you think they sent me proper documentation? No, I just no. didn't want the well, that's Canadian government to eventually go, knock, knock, knock. Hi, we're... I'm gonna freaking audit you and murder your life. That's freelance, yeah. That's yeah. that's that's okay. Um, so I guess he wasn't doing that either. Yeah. So uh, basically, I, I could have just kept it and took my chances, mm-hmm. but I'm big into not getting Breaking punished the by the government. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm yeah. really big into not jail. Now he I'm is super into that. It's a passion of mine. He's one of seventy <laughs> people that made money off this Ponzi scheme. Now it's not clear that he knew it was a Ponzi scheme. So that's let's take that off he's, the table right he's there. He's pleading ignorance, basically. Yeah, and, and you know what? The judge is saying bullshit. Well, the judge is saying, "How did you not have tax documents as- associated with this?" Mm-hmm. And I think that I both are fair. Sometimes people are just they have a lot of money and they aren't great with it. Like you know, that's possible too. Has he been fired? No. Okay. Uh, because it's not a part of the NHL now. Approximately two hundred twenty people invested in this scheme. One hundred fifty lost money, which means seventy made money. Which means those seventy people they're going after all of them and going. You got to give back that money. This is very Wolf of Wall Street. Oh, it's it's yeah. Anyway, I just thought how how weird is that? Rick Westhead was the one who reported on that, by the way, and then CBC also. Well, uh, do you think he up. keeps his job, or do you think he made a public blunder, which was? I I to- think it's separate from the NHL. I mean, it doesn't make the NHL look bad, so why fire him if he's doing a great? It doesn't. Listen, whatever happened there is separate from what he does with the NHL. If he's doing a great job with the NHL, he's doing a great job. If he ran the Ponzi scheme, then I'm like, dude. Mm-hmm. You're Rick, out. Rick Westhead blocked me. Why? I don't know. What did you do to Rick Westhead? <laughs> My best. My best guess is uh, maybe he's friends with Pierre Maguire. But Pierre's not on Twitter. Is Pierre also blocked? But, or did you? Pierre's not on Twitter. He's, he's, not, he's, not, he's not, not on Twitter. Not on Twitter. Yeah. But my best guess is Pierre Maguire used to work at TSN. Rick Westhead works at TSN. I rip Pierre Maguire. I also feel bad about that. I was maybe too hard on him. But um, We're all it's young really say- fun to yell, I can. So, but uh, yeah, so Rick not, Did, you, on did on you call Pierre Maguire a bad person, though? I don't think so. See here, making fun of something that someone says is something we do all the time with each other, it right? There's a big difference between going Pierre Maguire, I don't like Pierre Maguire's blank. He's a versus asshole. Yeah, if if you call Pierre Maguire an a-hole, then then that's one thing. That's attacking his character. But if you say I think that was a bad call, I don't know. If you criticize the action, there's nothing wrong that's with it. That's also a total guess. I don't know, maybe he just he just thinks I'm annoying. So he just he just go went out of his way one day to block you. <laughs> that guy's annoying, and I hope he never tweets me. Block. Well, it's funny. Sometimes I'll see someone like quote tweet something, and uh, I'll be like, "Oh, how come it's just a link?" I wonder. I want to know what this person's talking about, and I'll just be blocked. I'm like, "Oh, what the hell?" It's often from Edmonton personalities that I follow. So I think Oilers fans are like, "I'm sick of seeing this dangle guy in my <laughs> timeline." Block. And I'm like, oh. Steve, you should be proud that you've done enough things in your life to be blocked by people. No, I, I don't think you should ever be proud of being blocked. You should be proud. Because if you, you were truly a nobody, they wouldn't even block you. Because they, know they you wouldn't are. even see you. So be proud yeah. that you're a somebody who can be blocked. Phil Kessel, Tyler Bozak, Rick, <laughs> Rick Westhead, Evander Kane, thanks for making me proud. And uh, no longer the Knights, was it? Spitfires. 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 Um, that was hey, bizarre. I have a question. Um... With regards to, uh, you know, I forgot my question. I had something, and now I've totally forgotten it. Damn! Doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Let's get to actual question, period. Good, dog. I forgot some of the plays in the game, too. It's press conference time. Sorry. You that was a very good Kevin you? Durant quote. Thank yes. you. Thank you. I got it. I got you. You nailed it. Um, what that, team, was, that was cute. If you want to bring back up the standings, Adam. Sure. What team, this is from Barely Legal Seagull. I like your handle. What team that is currently under 500 has the best chance of making the playoffs? Mm. Who's under 500? Is there are there under hurricanes under 500? Uh, hurricanes are 500. You got in the east. You got Rangers 
Florida, Montreal, and Buffalo. And I count under 500 to be just wins and losses. Don't get me on the OTL stuff. <laughs> oh, you're not doing Batman 500? No, I'm not doing Batman 500. <laughs> That's what it is. Oh, for God. Then I'd have to do so no, much fucking calculating. No, no, no. way. Oh. Um, and then uh, and then in the East, you've got... Well, okay, mm, so here's the interesting... You've only got about, Edmonton and Arizona that are truly <laughs> below 500 if you don't count overtime losses. Okay. Here's the interesting thing about... Um, because uh, mm. under 500 and that definition. So a lot of Senators fans ripped the Leafs last year because the Leafs had technically lost more games than they won. Mm-hmm. Um, they won 40, which means they lost 42. 42. The Sens through 12 games are 5, 2, and 5. They have seven losses, technically. Seven lo- but yeah. five of them are in OT do, shootout. How about we amend the question and sure. we make it okay. to how many teams in the— like name a team in each conference in the playoffs that is not currently in the playoffs in the, in the playoff race. See what I'm saying? So you got in in the East. Here are your teams that could make the playoffs that are not currently. Sure. Detroit, by the way, which just snapped a six game win streak, is still in the playoff hunt. Crazy. <laughs> um, so they're ninth. Boston, Washington, Carolina, New York, Florida, Montreal, Buffalo. Who do you think's most likely out of those guys? Maybe Boston. Washington is the easy answer for me. Yeah, I think. Oh, yeah. I honestly yeah. don't think the Caps are bad. I no, really, I don't. Good. They look good. Yeah, they, man, their like, veterans are playing as good as they ever have. Um, it's just a matter of their young guys getting better, which they will. Yeah. So, um, and then you've got in the Western Conference, this Colorado. Is not wearing shoes right now. Colorado. Yeah, wearing shoes. Hey, can we get to the question here? <laughs> Sorry. Who cares that he's not <laughs> wearing shoes? Does it matter? Does that. it matter? All right. I accidentally <laughs> played footsies with him. Like, uh, <laughs> Colorado, Nashville, Chicago, Calgary, <laughs> Minnesota, Edmonton, Arizona. <laughs> Pick Arizona. <laughs> yeah. Pick Arizona. Oh, my God. I picked them as one of my upset teams. Uh, is San Jose on the inside? Yes, they're eight. Oh, barely. That's crazy. God, they look good. They just snuck inside the club before closing time. Yeah. I'm surprised Calgary's so bad. Well, they're six and six, and they're actually a true six and six. They have not lost. That's overtime. right. That's right. No, so, I mean, I'm, they're not that I'm bad. I'm going to say Calgary. Because San Jose is six and five, and they're in. And Calgary's six and six, and they're not. So twenty-eight goals. There's four, four teams tied with twelve. Yeah, yeah. Against. Five teams tied with twelve points. Yeah, that's surprising to me. Calgary? Well, I, I would say Calgary. Yeah, I think Calgary's pretty pretty darn good. Minnesota. I mean, they're better than their record, but they're busted up. So and they're not as good as are they as good as their record showed last year, or did they go on an almost twenty game win streak or whatever it was? Oh my God! Wasn't sixteen? Or, yeah. or no, that was Columbus. Columbus, yeah, was Columbus was Minnesota yeah. was. There was they lost Columbus. to Columbus. Four teams had ten or yeah, double digit win streaks last right. year. Right, and I think and it was one of the first missed, time in NHL Philly missed the playoffs. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, and it, go ahead, your stuff. The it was like the first time in NHL history two teams with double digit winning streaks played each other. Yeah, the Minnesota and uh, Columbus game was it? Yeah, and it just happened to be like New Year's Eve or New Year's Day that they were playing. It was crazy. crazy. It was yeah. one of our one hundred and one hundred moments. Um, so yeah, yeah those are they're, all, they're all busted up. Yeah, Calgary I would say Calgary, and, uh, and who did they say in the East? Carolina. Uh, Carolina. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Next okay. question. I'm sorry. Uh, I approve. For two of you, this is from Thrill Ho on Reddit. Okay. At what point? That's what, that was me in my early twenties. <laughs> <laughs> at what point do you worry that the 1718 Toronto Maple Leafs are actually the 1516 Dallas Stars? Oh, I don't think that's even comparable. No. No. Nah. Uh, no. No, I would... Uh, and it's, no. especially, it would not be month one. <laughs> that's for sure. And <laughs> yeah, currently all, with the Leafs yeah. sitting in sixth place in the conference where a week ago they were second in this conference. Like, I, I'm i sorry. No. I'll take they, they lost three games. Yeah, I'll take Freddie over Niemi and Lettinen combined. And yeah. then, yeah, they're... The Leafs, I would argue, are better offensively than even that Stars team was. Hmm. For sure. Stars team, that, that kind of circled around they like three guys. No defense. Mm-hmm. Like, you think the Leafs' defense is weak. Go back and look at that team. That, w- that was bad. Uh, final question. I think this is a good wrap. Steve, yes. you talked about how there was nothing to pan- panic about when they were struggling in October last year. This is the Leafs. Apparently, you haven't rewatched your LFRs. <laughs> well,. Yeah, no, I guess you're right. Well, what wait, what? I, what I was building last off year of, when we had two wins, Steve said, "There's nothing to panic about." And this year, see, apparently, has different team, though, I different, call different it, expectations. Yeah, I would call it very different because the Leafs had two wins in October last year, but in so many of those games, even the ones they lost, they were the better team. 
mm-hmm. or it looked like they should have won, or they had some epic collapse. Um, oh they were God. up. What did they have? Four epic collapses. Third in the- game of the season, they were up four nothing on the Jets, and they <laughs> caught that lead up. And miraculously, it took them two games to cough up a four goal lead this year when they beat the Rangers. Uh, they had that collapse against the Blackhawks. There were so Ottawa, many games. Game the one. first game of the season, yeah. <laughs> oh, like so many, so many games where they looked like the better team, or they were this close to winning and they lost. They mm-hmm. were finding ways to lose, and they all they had to do was something had to click. And what's really impressive is if you go back and look at the Leafs schedule, they didn't really have many crazy win streaks. No, like maybe was, two or three at the most. It's chips. Just they, it's chipped away. Just November, good. December, good. January, good. Um, this year, they were winning games and looking bad. Yes, they doing were. It. Now, part of that might be they were getting off to early leads, and then it's just all defense from there, which is not their strong suit. But like even the game against the Jets, like it's amazing the Leafs weren't getting killed after the first period there. And somehow they left that period up 3 nothing. Yeah. Steve Mason was garbage. And then they cough up a four-goal lead against the Rangers. And then they were losing 3-1 to the they, Blackhawks. Winning, it's like winning back. every game 8-5. Like, you can't, like, eventually that's gonna, that 5 will bite you. Yeah, like, we, I feel like we talked about it on the show where we were looking at the Leafs playing style and going, is this bad? Like, is this bad that they're winning all these games? Because you're not learning any lessons. Connor Carrick sort of talked about it when he was interviewed yesterday. He's, you know, we were still going, well, we won, but. But there was no need to address the but because you were winning. You were 7 and 2, 7 and 1, something yeah. like that. Um, no, now with a losing streak, they're being forced to confront the but. <laughs> Gotta confront the but. Confront the butt is the title of this yeah. episode. <laughs> yeah, so let's do it. Yeah. Now, is it that two T's or one? One. We can't yeah, get two cheeky. I don't think, yeah. Oh. Ah! I didn't even mean to do that. <laughs> wow. This guy. Oh, yeah. It was cold meds, man. They're working for you. Oh, they are. Tonight's game seven. Oh, was going. So the, the Leafs are on Sportsnet 1 tonight. Fuck that. Fuck that. It's game seven. That means, by the way, in the in the in uh, At in, 10 in in, in yes, um, I can watch the end of it. <laughs> in commercial, in hockey terms, in the states, that means we're on the Ocho. <laughs> ESPN uh, eight, ESPN. the Ocho. Like we're like it's cause for Sportsnet to put the Leafs on Sportsnet one. Yeah. Whoa, whoa. Which means if you don't have it, you should go out and purchase Sportsnet one, mm-hmm. or get Sportsnet now, where you can watch it on any mobile device for twenty five. That's right, Jesse. Twenty five clean dollars a month. Wow, that's, that's so cheap. I know. Wow. Skip so a couple giving. coffees? You got that every month. Yeah. That's actually true. Your daily coffee, that's about 25 bucks a month. Mm. What studio are we in right now? Um, oh, by the way, <laughs> I know that was a perfect ending, but I had to throw this out there. <laughs> my, Go ahead, Steve. <laughs> my favorite YouTube comment. You Steve did. No, I'm Steve in this. I don't care. <laughs> my favorite YouTube comment was, you know, I love the new studio, but there's too much Toronto in it. Now, uh-huh. I, I, guys, here's the thing. We broadcast us out of the Sportsnet 590 Toronto studios. That's sort of the yeah. that's sort of the deal. It's a Toronto station, so I'm sorry that that offends you, but we're in Toronto working for a Toronto station. There's too much sports <laughs> in this room. There is too much, and it was like, there's too much Leafs, and it's all Blue Jays, actually, in the yeah, background. Yeah, the red wall is Blue Jays. The actual Canada's team right now. Can I, can I take the camera? Oh, hold on. Yeah, do it. Oh, you're going free. Free hand. Oh, man. Have we ever done this? No. I don't know. Uh, but, like, the new station in Vancouver, I'm willing to bet, is not plastered with leaf stuff. <laughs> yeah, I really no. got my red nose in there. You mean uh, you mean Andrew Walker Canucks fan? Isn't... Uh, Boy, is he really enjoying the role of Canucks fan. He is. And Whitecaps fan. Loves those Whitecaps. He's really enjoying the role By the way, of, he's from out there, so that makes... I Toronto him, now. Yeah. And he loves it. Yeah. And, okay, that's such a Canadian thing you just said. No, he's not. He's from BC, and he worked in Alberta. He, so yeah, he's those from aren't there. the same. He grew up. Can, he grew up a Canucks fan. Oh, he did. Yeah, he's oh. from BC. No, he's from Saskatchewan. I thought. Oh, is he? Oh, okay. I don't know. I thought he was from BC. You're better friends with him than I am. Okay. Well, I'll ask him. Ask the fucking guy. <laughs> so I asked the he fucking guy. He said his name was Walker. <laughs> um, all right, we're out of here. Uh, Jesse, did you show off all the Toronto stuff? I did. Give him a little, a little tour. 
You know, like oh, all show, the show, uh, show, show this guy. guy, by the way. Show this guy. Yeah, that's the rest of the oh, scene. Oh, there's me. Hi. Show buddy with the crazy face paint. Yeah, yeah, I got him. Oh, hey, look. Kevin Bieksa is also out tonight. Oh, yeah, because he, he got a hand injury with that Superman punch. <laughs> really? Did, yeah, did is you that know that? I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. that. Oh, he's out? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, he busted his hand. Well, unless it was busted beforehand. And he shouldn't have done that. Either way, he shouldn't have oughta done that. That's the funny thing about hockey fights is they're bare knuckle. It's not smart. How come nobody has put Soldier Boy to that <laughs> to, to to that replay? You and like, oh, <laughs> that yeah, it's a bummer. Vine Superman not still around? No, was, yeah, I know. Uh, on my sick day. On your Twitter account, no, no, I don't no, think so. <laughs> use the just use the camera audio. Yeah. It's probably really Yeah, that good. won't be complicated to edit at all. No. Nope. Hey, no. should we end the show now? <laughs> yeah. Follow the guys on Twitter at Steam underscore Dangle, at Adam W Y L D E, and at Jesse Blake. The Steve Dangle Podcast. Brought to you by Panago Pizza. Order at panago.com and stuff your face with deliciousness.